A very good morning to you and welcome to The Key Points with me, Abna Tebi. We are live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com. Also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. It is the 13th day of July 2019. Gradually we are inching past uh, the half year, half, half mark of the year. And we are grateful to God for bringing us this far. The show runs from now till 9.50 a.m. where conversations will be brought to a close. We encourage you to, as usual, send through your comments and whatever it is you have to share in respect of the topics we'll be discussing to our WhatsApp line 020-216-633 and we will read them as we go along on the show. So this morning, obviously, uh, we will be looking at the arrival, the much-awaited arrival of Nana Apiamensa and it happened this week so aka nam one nana piamensa the ceo of men's gold arrived in the country this week specifically on thursday so in summary he returned from dubai where he had been in lawful custody since the 7th of december 2018 and on his arrival he was arrested by the Criminal Investigations Department CID of the Ghana Police Service and subsequently arraigned before court on charges of abetment to defraud by false pretense and abetment to carry out banking business without license, uh, which is contrary to Section 61 of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2016, Act 930. Now, the court has since then remanded him into police custody and the case has been adjourned to the 26th of July 2019. So indeed, Namwan needs no introduction and the subject of controversy around him needs no description. We've talked about this over and over again. On the show this morning, we'll be looking at what people view as, you know, a likely rekindling of the hope of thousands of customers who invested huge sums of money into his gold derivative business. Question is, is that really the case? Is that the hope people have been yearning for, particularly the aggrieved members or the aggrieved customers of Men's Gold. So on the show this morning, we shall be looking at the much-awaited return of Namwan and what that holds for the aggrieved customers and matters arising. Then we turn our attention into the power sector, where this week the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Bulk Consumers issued a statement and in that statement they impressed upon power distribution services pds to pay all outstanding debts owed their members or they will shut down their plants they also alerted the public of looming power outages unless pds fulfills its financial obligations to their members within a seven-day period now the effects of the independent power producers shutting down their plants well we know all too well what that would mean and we don't want that to happen. Now the Chamber actually did acknowledge that in their statement but said well they don't have any option or any other choice but to shut down their plans because they can't continue to be saddled with huge debts. So yes once again we are confronted with the ever constant question that comes up within the discourse that comes up within the, um, the energy sector or the power sector which has to do with financing or money or let me just put it this way the lack of it and how the lack of money within the power sector can actually plunge us into darkness with its attendant um, challenges so on the show this morning we shall be looking at the arrival of Nam one what it means to the aggrieved customers of men's gold and then we'll also look at the power sector are we are looking at a possible you know doom sort returning in view of what the ipps are saying so these are the topics we'll be looking at this morning we'll take a quick break when we come back i'll introduce you to the very first set of our panelists which will be looking at the issue of nam one and his return see you shortly Welcome back. This is The Key Points. We're live on TV3, also live on 3 FM 92.7 and around the world at 3news.com. Also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So I will introduce um, the panelists for this part of the show where we're looking at the return of Nam One. Um, to my extreme left, we have Mr. Joe Jackson. He is the Chief Operations Officer with Dalex Finance. 
Next to him is Mr. Martin Pibu. He is a lawyer. And to my right, we have Mahmoud Salifu. He is a member of the Coalition of Aggrieved Men's Gold Customers. We're expecting another guest when she comes and we'll do the needful and introduce him. Good morning, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. So the Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold Ghana, Nana Apia Mensa, has been remanded in police custody. Now, according to TV's resources at the Criminal Investigations Department, Namwan has been provisionally charged for taking deposits without a license, defrauding by false pretenses, and money laundering. <clears throat> we will be taking um, uh, some sound bites um, coming from DSP Juliana Obing, addressing the press um, in respect of the return of Namwan, along with the charges preferred against him. So let's take a quick listen, and we shall come to the panelists to start the conversation. Uh, popularly known as Nam One, is presently in the custody of the Criminal Investigations Department headquarters. This follows um, an Interpol alert issued for the accused Nam One. He was handed over to Interpol Ghana by Interpol Dubai today for the continuation of the investigations that started 2018. She was. Well, so that was um, DSP Juliano being with the CID um, of the Ghana Police Service telling us that Namwan um, arrived on Thursday into the country and he was handed over to Interpol Ghana by Interpol Dubai. Well, like I said earlier on, the Namwan needs no introduction, the subject matter needs no description. We've discussed it several times on the show and, you know, it's been uh, the center of conversations at so many, wherever, different, different fora. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to you. I mean, luckily we have uh, somebody closer to the issue mm -hmm. in terms of one of the aggrieved mm -hmm. customers here with us in the person of Mahamud, and we are happy that you, you, you're joining us. But we'll start off with um, Mr. Joe Jackson. Finally, Nam One is here. I think when we heard of his predicament in Dubai, you know, uh, particularly his, 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 the customers of Men's Gold were agitated about it. We need him here, bring him here, let's see what we can get from him when he comes here and all of that. Now he's here. Are you hopeful? Good morning, good morning, good morning to uh, the viewers and uh, everyone. I if I was a politician, I'll be giving a shout out to, to my constituents. But since I'm not, <laughs> I'll give a shout out to my 81-year group mm -hmm. <laughs> from France. But really, Men's Gold was, was, an, was an organization, for better or for worse. It had staff. It had bank accounts. It had... A board. A, so... The challenge I've always had was that, was this institution only run by Nam One, such that, uh, Nanapia Mensa, such that um, he only, he's the only one who had access to bank accounts, knew where the money was, etc., etc. So, truly, his, I, I think it's, he's almost become like a cult figure yeah. who's supposed to come and dispense salvation to his many followers who have given him their trust. I'm skeptical. Mm. Skeptical because if it was that simple, if why wasn't the, why wasn't the, if by his just say so, the money would be paid, why didn't it happen earlier? Two, so all that money was predicated on one court case in Dubai, which he could have lost. And if he lost, what would have happened? There's so many things we don't understand. And I'm actually hopeful that the court case will, will let us understand a bit more of what happened and, and throw more light. Part of the problem some of us had from day one was what was the operation that 
was happening that promised to deliver <laughs> those fantastic rates mm. to his customers. I'm skeptical. I'm not as hopeful. You know, the sad thing is, the real people involved, with real issues involved, and with a lot of pain and heartache involved, and, and you have compassion for them. But at the same time, I'm very worried about raising false mm. hope, mm. because that is even worse. Mm. So I, I am skeptical. I, I, I'm wondering if it was as simple as number one arrives in town and, 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 and everything is done and everybody gets paid, even if it's without the interest, but gets paid their principal, the principal sums, yeah. and principal sums. Mm. It's almost too good to be true. Mm. And anything that is too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Mm. So I am skeptical. I am skeptical. And, and it's, it, we, I'm actually waiting with bated breath to see what the court will come out with. And, 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 the, and I hope that it will be public so that we will all understand. And you see, the important thing from this number one episode for me is not so much as what is happening, mm -hmm. as how it will become... A, a, a process of education right. and financial literacy mm -hmm. for the public at large. Right. And so it, it, it's not so much that a mistake has been made. It's not so much as it, it, it doesn't matter whether I am skeptical, and it, but for people to get educated as to, because the already news comes around. Mm. The number of them around, uh, the, 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 there was an announcement from SEC, etc., about new scams. So we, this process must be public, must be discussed, must be aired, so that people don't make the same mistakes again. Right, right. Now, Mr. Mr. Kwebu, mm -hmm. yes. Mr. Joe Jackson touched mm -hmm. on, <clears throat> I don't know, well, mm -hmm. maybe he didn't touch on that, but the, the, what he's supposed to have won mm -hmm. in, in Dubai. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> that $39 million. 39 million dollars. Dollars. Mm -hmm. Against that background, how do we manage the expectations of the of, 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 of the aggrieved customers? Because clearly, yeah. I mean, they've heard yeah. that he's won some amounts. Yes. Whether it's sufficient enough to go around, we don't know. Yeah. But within that context, question mm -hmm. is, how do we manage the expectations of, of the aggrieved customers? Wow. Because I'm right. sure they're thinking, well, the 39 million is going to be, you know, used to pay exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, it's really a tough one. Very, very tough. I mean, considering that from what we understand, Certainly, the, what he owes is far more than $39 million. So it's difficult, but maybe looking at it, there will come a point in time that perhaps the uh, government will have to do something to help, uh -huh. you see. But we must first uh, uh, realize all his assets, realize everything, and then when we are done with that, perhaps government may have to, because the way the people keep charging and charging, yeah. you know, maybe this should be the last one, because it's painful. Sometimes you look at it, you, you really don't understand why people would have fallen for it, but hey, as Mr. Jackson said, you know, there is an issue with financial illiteracy in this country, you know, there's a big problem. So people give you all manner of interest rates, and there's that, we've always had that get rich quick attitude. It didn't start today. Look, it's always been there culturally, you know, uh, local pledges, uh, contracts. Somebody you mentioned 200% interest. And you're like, wow, mm. people who haven't been to school, okay? Sometimes you think that, oh, it's a book long people who are interested in getting money quick. But <laughs> going to the villages, pledges, customary pledges, right. uh, very high interest, uh, useful. So it's a cultural problem. Get rich quick. Mm. It's always been with us. Always been with us, you know. So this, as Mr. Jackson said, I support his um, submission that this case will help bring a lot of financial Should be a call to action for us. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. So the customers, as my advice would be that they should be a bit patient. Give the authorities the opportunity to be able to do due process realize all his assets you know as this criminal case is going on it's without prejudice to the civil exactly, aspect definitely, so yeah. it's in number one's interest to cooperate so that they realize all his assets and then pay the customers and you know but speak, sorry but speaking of realization of assets you do recall that um <clears throat> i don't remember if it was late last year or early this year mm -hmm. we did hear of news about ioko apparently mm -hmm. ioko had uh, obtained yes. an order yes, to freeze yes. his assets but the question was where are the assets to even oh, go 
I, I hear they got some. They did get they, some. Yes. Great. So now we will need everything brought into one pool. Mm. You see now this current remand and the current investigations by the CID. Meanwhile, Yoko had done some work. Uh -huh. So we are expecting a coordination, you know, in right. the Yoko Act. So maybe if CID is going to do the prosecution, then Yoko will send over what they have sure. done so far. And the $39 million. You see, so that's how I come, uh, I'll depart a bit from uh, Mr. Jackson when it comes to the expectation. Mm. You know, the $39 million, uh, Ghana. If you were million dollars. Here, uh, sorry, uh, million dollars. If we hadn't come into the country, what would be a uh, uh, level of expectation that uh, we will get that money? Because it's supposed to be paid to him. So if it's but, not, but, here, but that's a point where I think what Mr. Jackson was saying was this: it was a company we're dealing with. Yes. Unless we're saying Men's Gold was a sole proprietorship, but it was a company limited yes. by shares. So you'd expect the structures to be there, so yes. that in the absence of the CEO, yes, are we saying everything grinds to a halt? No, but you know, a lot of the time we have this one-man company. So for me, I'm very optimistic that now that we have him in Ghana, and you know, even he will be granted bail, of course, as a matter of course, soon, once he meets the conditions. Unanda is in the country. The 39, we are sure, will come into Ghana. But if we hadn't brought him down, let's say he's in America, and he, he has a 39 America, we will... A question for you would uh -huh. be, was the 39 worn in his personal capacity, or was Momentum. the 39 worn to oh, I see what you yeah. mean. Oh, but for all intents and purposes, he's the alter ego. Everything. I mean, he is a company. You know, <laughs> he is a company. He owns everything, basically. Every look, trust me. From the way things look, even when you see shares in the name of his wife, that's nominal. He's the ultimate owner. Everything that, revolves that, around that's, him. That's why I yes, refer that to one, him no, as a cult figure. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So that mm -hmm. one, there's no argument. So that for all intents and purposes, the 39 million will be available for, uh, what do you call it, um, disbursement, and that's to pay off the debt. Yes. That is, yes, if, if government or if the state should act in time oh. to be able to otherwise... I'm expecting that once he's in Ghana, hey, you know, that one will not lose any uh, chance. We've learned <laughs> very hard lessons from this. So I'm sure the bill conditions and all this will take cognizance of that to make sure that it will be said that as soon as he's paid, that money is escrewed. So in natural fact, yes, they, I'm sure they will work on all that. As for this, no, I, I, I don't want to believe for one second that we will go for it. <laughs> say that he will take the 39 and abscond. No. Even considering the way the case uh, has, uh, you know, like they would say, it's of national security dimension. Sure. You see how they are grief cuts. I'm that, sure yeah. we hear from Mr. Uh, oh, yes, Mahmoud. Mr. Mahmoud and the rest. So looking at it, I'm sure that even the bail conditions would be set. But he was refused that, bail. Yes. Oh, naturally, Both, you know, he's yeah. been away for so long. So the CID, you know, haven't uh, grabbed him for now. They will need some time to sure. invest it. But I'm sure that at the next certain he'll be granted. Because, because thanks to you now, every every offense maybe, is, maybe is say, available. Yes, maybe we should say the Supreme Court. <laughs> well, yeah. They, 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 you they, took I it. I so. to make a little yes. interjection sure. here whilst this discussion was going, which is that all we look at is the liability of men's gold to his customers. Mm -hmm. But the other stakeholders who may have a stake. But they should have claimed or uh, this and put up their stake by now. The, the challenge you have is that it's not like there's a receiver process where, so everybody is going to court, mm. people are suing. Mm -hmm. So until everything comes together, mm -hmm. we don't even know very well what the sum total of the liabilities are. Of course, we expect that the largest liability the key word being expect right. will be to the customers, mm -hmm. but nothing says so. Yeah, because at the end of the day, you need yeah, to even deal with point. the priorities, who you mm -hmm. need to deal with, the creditors, exactly. and, you know, yeah. before it comes yeah. to all and of exactly. that. Exactly, and exactly. it's supposed yeah. to be yeah. a so trading company. Who? You don't know who his suppliers have been, have they been paid, mm -hmm. because he was supposed, in quotes, supposed to be trading with the money. Yes. So have suppliers been paid? Mm. Uh, uh, when it comes to trading, but you, uh, uh, off camera, you even you reminded me of this fact. So far, there's no evidence of much trading. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what? Let, let me let me quickly move to Mahmoud's uh, side here and take his perspective. So you you are one of the many aggrieved customers of Men's Gold. What 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 what? How did you feel when you heard about his arrival? What what? Did, what ran through your head or your mind? Good morning to your viewers. But, um, well, when we heard of his arrival, <coughs> um, 
who were delighted, extremely delighted, because for a very long time we haven't heard of him, and in, in his absence, nothing happened. We no tried. communication from the there company. There was no communication nothing. from whichever source, from Men's Gold. Uh, so we thought his arrival would bring some sigh of relief and that um, it would bring some hope to the dying customers because a lot of them are, are, are on the sick bed. Some cannot pay for their medical bills. Some have been ejected from their homes because their rents have expired and some cannot pay their children's school fees. So this, we thought, was an opportunity to give such people hopes because currently we have no less than 20 deaths. Mm. After, I mean, as a result of this men's gold debacle. So, but there was a turnaround yesterday mm -hmm. after uh, the man was taken to court in a style that I have not witnessed before. I don't know what time I, we, are, we are hearing that it happened as early as 6 a.m. or thereabout. If that turns out to be true, and the fact that no media was able mm. to uh, mm. cover the whole, the entire... It was held in camera. It, it, it's, it's a bit suspicious as to why government is dealing with the matter in this manner. Mm. And, 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 and the question is, I, 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 we are saying that this, even, this action is even belated. Because as far back as uh, August, September, when this uh, Security and Exchange Commission asked Men's Gold to shut down, that was the time this man should have been grabbed. And... Even before the company, the shutdown of the company, the institution, the state, the state institution should have tracked all his assets and bank accounts to ensure that they were in safe custody of the state, such so that if anything went wrong, it could be used to settle the customers. But state institutions failed in that direction. And, but I, I, I think that one of the reasons why they are taking this action is that people have said, there's this rumor that Namwan is one of their own and that they cannot deal with him decisively um, as expected of uh, uh, a law uh, abiding this, uh, country. So they want to deal with him in this way so that that is, uh, perception will be erased because people believe that uh, Bank of Ghana keep on telling us that they warned us af as far back as 2014. Mm -hmm. But you and I know very well, if a state institution like Bank of Ghana warned us as far back as 2014 to desist from doing business with men's gold, yet in 2017 or so, this man was given some reception at the presidency. If someone is suspected of uh, 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 some criminality and is given a, some, a reception at the presidency, the highest seat of the land, to, to meet the president, that... that, that for me, at that point, I would doubt the warnings of the Bank of Ghana. And again, such a person with this record um, was, was, was given donation to the Rebecca Foundation. And is it, is it believable that someone with this record, that the Bank of Ghana is a whole inst state institution, thought had some form of criminality, was operating illegally. Well, let Yet, me, let me all I don't, think, I don't think the Bank of Ghana uh, thought he, there was some element of criminality because that one is for the court to determine. Yeah, yeah but even so if, at if, that point, we can't necessarily say... there was some form of illegality. They, they are talking about yeah. uh, taking deposits without... You can say there was, without, yes, without, they had some irregularity. Irregularity. Yes, so if fine, but the, the, person, the company, uh, the CEO of a company that was operating illegally, donating to the first, the, the first gentleman of the land's wife, sponsoring the GFA, the who, is an, is a, is GFA uh -huh. is a state asset. Uh -huh. And so you look at all this and you realize that, okay, um, since people believe that he's one of them, and that's why they couldn't even handle him when he was leaving this country, because you can't believe that someone with this, they, I mean, who have um, taken people's I mean, over 40 people, 40,000 people's deposit is allowed a free passage outside this country. So let's now deal with him yeah. this way so that people will feel that, oh, okay, uh, we, we are acting, we are acting. But that, is, that has never been the demand of this customer. And you hear the CID uh, or the government say that customers have complained, and it is the reason why the man is being prosecuted. No customer complained to the CID that we want this man prosecuted. Or he has defrauded us. That has never been the, the, the any. That has never been a complaint of any customer. The, the point is, we demonstrated in Kumasi, and right from there, the CID asked us to bring so who is to Francis, furnish them with who is, their details. Who is Francis Agoji then? 
Francis are Which Francis are Because and they make sure they make exactly and sixteen thousand others. Sixteen thousand others. We collected the names and took to the CIA. So you're saying Francis Agoji, whose name apparently appears on the chat sheet, is not. A customer I of don't we don't know him no no but to categorically say that no customer of men's gold okay has okay if, if you mention that matter, Francis that should... mm -hmm. as one and 16,000 others the 16,000 others um, that we collated those names and took to the CID mm -hmm. none of us complained that they want this man prosecuted all we've been looking for is how to get it to retrieve our monies mm -hmm. and we, we you see this even makes the case worse we first petitioned Bank of Ghana, Security and Exchange Commission, the presidency, the highest seat of the land, for their intervention so that we could get this money retrieved. None of them responded to our petition. Not even a word. And so at this point, that, then the CID says, so it was after that, then we said, okay, let's then, uh, once he, as soon as CID uh, asks us to provide them with our, our details, let's do so. So we only provide, furnish them with our details and nothing else. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you you're saying that the the, the 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 entire body of the aggrieved customers of men's good do not necessarily care about the prosecution. His prosecution, or his prosecution you, will not benefit a, a, the dying customers of mm. men's gold in any way. All we are looking for is the state facilitation towards recovery of our funds and nothing else. Very well. I'll, I'll come back to you. So, gentlemen, clearly, the aggrieved customers, what they have on their mind is their money. That's one. But again. When this conversation comes up, I mean, you can talk about, uh, you know, men's gold and its dealings and everything, but key, key, key amongst that whole, you know, um, 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 uh, mix of things is regulatory failure or inertia mm -hmm. or lack of proactivity, whatever it is you may call it, because it's come up again. Mm -hmm. Consistently, it comes up. I mean, there are those who would say, well, the Bank of Ghana put an alert out, not even an alert, several alerts out. Mm -hmm. there's, that, there's that side of the argument as well. But then there's also the counter, which is, well, the state has a responsibility to ensure that its citizens are protected. And citizens here being those who are vulnerable. I mean, we can go heaven and hell and talk about all these things, but at the end of the day, mm -hmm. the state cannot necessarily stand aloof. Yeah, can that? be the case yeah, definitely the state can't stand aloof and uh, um, uh, that's not what they are doing now we all know but what it is is that they weren't fast enough you see you issue alerts we all know the enormous coercive powers of the state mm -hmm. yeah they didn't deploy it uh, so it breeds all this speculation that you you, you, you know yes. and the rumors that you yes. hear from Mahmoud. Yes, yes, uh, and you can't necessarily fault them when they come up with such you yes. know because and as for conspiracy theories yeah. they are always uh, <laughs> rife. Okay, conspiracy theories abound. So we will stay focused. You know, some of those uh, allegations, we, I just want to stay away because mm -hmm. you don't want to be hit with a lawsuit exactly. about defamation yeah, yeah. and the rest. You know, so basically, what we should be looking at is that. You see, Mahmoud accepts that they reported to CID. Yeah, CID, as soon as you go there, CID is not a debt collection agency. They are to prosecute. For them, they deal with the criminal aspect. If you're just interested in only the uh, uh, recovery of your money, that one, you go see a lawyer. Then the lawyer sues. Well, he said so, they didn't necessarily report. It was the CID who requested for information. Yes. So for him, he, well, what I get from him is that they didn't set out okay on but this, Mahmoud, you know let me show you this thing just, just a minute, minute just a minute then, yes yes so this is how it works Mahmoud. practically you see now he's in custody okay pending further investigations and the rest what it does is that it will bring enormous pressure to bear on him so that he would uh, help pay off your debt quickly because what happens is that there is a relationship between his paying off your debt and the criminal case. If he's able to pay off your debts, the criminal case eventually dies off because in law, if you are not interested, usually the state will not push uh, the, the case forward, okay? Because there are, we have armed robbery, the violent crimes and all that. We don't have enough policemen, so we will not use resources in a case that the complainant is not interested in. So. Do you think that this would be one of those cases? So the extent that it's it, it's gained oh, a certain it stature. Yes, it's become one of public policy. If you ask me, public interest. Do you think that if the the the, the complainants, yes. for lack of a better word, because he's saying, well, they didn't go make any yeah. complaints, but mm -hmm. we have a Francis Agoji name here. Yes. Clearly, that he must have gone there to do that complaint. Yeah. But do you think that 
we would, you know, the state would be ready to say, well, we won't pursue this even because the, the, the complainants are not necessarily interested, given the, the, the kind of prominence it has gained in, in, in our public, you know, discourse. Okay. Uh, what will happen is that the state will probably have no choice because, Abna, you know it very well that to uh, convict successfully, you need witnesses. Sure. The witnesses who have to bring in their exactly. contracts and testify in court and all that. So if, if you don't it, get that. Exactly. So we'll take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that for now, even though he's saying they didn't uh, lodge a criminal complaint, so it is not their expectation that he'd be prosecuted, there is a direct correlation between the prosecution now and the likelihood of they are getting their money because right. he knows that there is a serious a sword hanging around his neck. So if he doesn't pay, he'll be glued tied, mm. so to speak. So I think that is a very big incentive right. for him to sort it out, mm -hmm. that is to pay the debts in, the, in a civil manner so that it can whittle down substantially the effect of the criminal case. So you should be happy for it. Because uh, every day in court, we meet people who have sued men's gold. I see some of the oh, lawyers. Yeah, yeah. You see sometimes 150 people. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sometimes you see 50 uh, plaintiffs, all that. But they didn't get their money. But now that he's been arrested and they're doing the criminal investigation, it will have a substantial effect on the civil side. Okay? Mm. So be hopeful. Look at it positive. <laughs> Very well. Um, Mr. Jackson, you well, wanted to come I, in. You know, the, the, I, I, I want to disagree a, mm. bit, uh, mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. with uh, Mahmoud. First of all, someone, um, I, I disagree that all the none of the customers have gone to court to make a criminal uh, uh, allegation. That I agree with. There's been enough, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, publicity given to criminal cases, etc., especially in Kumasi and Obuasi. Civil, civil or criminal? Criminal. Right. They've, they've said they've said people have gone to court to say he's defrauded me. That's not a that's not a yeah, that, that, that uh, is a criminal uh, that's mm -hmm. a criminal case. Mm -hmm. if, if I go to court to say you've defrauded me, not that. Uh, there's a civil and a criminal mm -hmm. side. So the criminal side is section one three one. Yes, which is what he's saying that in part mm -hmm. in parts of the country, Obuasi and mm -hmm. some other areas, the, he, the, 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 the people have gone to cases. court to say uh -huh. he's uh, men's in the civil court. Yes, it's allowed. So the fraud, eh, we have civil and we have criminal. Okay. So both can go. All right. Mm -hmm. But the issue really also is this. Mm -hmm. The customers of Men's Gold can't have it both ways. You can't say that the, the authorities mm -hmm. are not helping you yes. and that you've petitioned. Yes. And yet when, they are be when he's being prosecuted, still say that uh, 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 there's something fishy going on. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, yeah. listen, uh, even, even, when, even though the state has a right to protect me, mm -hmm. the state has to use certain processes yes. to protect me. Yeah. So it can't, uh, the process can't be to arrest him, give him a few slaps, and say pay. <laughs> the process has to be that he goes to court, yes. he's prosecuted, and, uh, mm -hmm. he's prosecuted in mm -hmm. court, mm -hmm. and uh, 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 he's charged with, yeah. and some of the charges make sense. He's charged with running a financial institution mm -hmm. without, without license. licenses. Mm -hmm. So we take you to court, and, and, the, and, and then you re return the uh, uh, money to the depositors that you took it from, mm -hmm. if you have the money still. That's the question, if. if but that, we're not even there yet. But you can't have it both ways. You mm -hmm. can't claim that the state does not... Uh, 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 it's not taking action. It's not and taking when action. Take action. And when they do take action, say that. And you see, but you I think they're looking at the outcomes of both, you know, um, 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 if you like, streams of yes. actions. If you look at the prosecution now, you're looking at the outcome, which is a possible, mm -hmm. I mean, worst case scenario, mm -hmm. he's sentenced, he yeah. has a custodial term. Okay, and then what? The question years. then is, mm -hmm. Mahmoud, mm -hmm. will he get his money? Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at where they are coming from, mm -hmm. that perhaps the, the state should have intervened in a much quicker fashion mm -hmm. by freezing assets or at least finding assets and mm -hmm. doing the need for, mm -hmm. then there's a certain assurance that, you know, we'll get something at the end. So yes, they, are, they may not, you know, necessarily be optimistic with the prosecution because they are thinking, at the end of the I day, really. he goes, you know, worst case scenario, he's, 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 he's sentenced, mm -hmm. he goes to jail, and then what happens? Oh, but but, but at the same assets, time, even the criminal let's, court, the judge can order that they should restitution. We, we, sure. they, they we should may talk assets, about the, the Bank of Ghana, for example, and talk about how the Bank of Ghana hasn't... Uh, but let's not give a dog a bad name and hang it. Bank of Ghana, in this case, in this particular instance, actually came up with multiple warnings. Mm -hmm. 
And it's, you see, when you hear there's people in September of 2018, 2018 mm -hmm. we're still putting money, you, you start to wonder that, and, and here's part of the education process that we must talk about. Mm -hmm. If you're taking any money to any institution, any individual, you must at least make some effort mm -hmm. to find out about the issues. Mm -hmm. It's, it's tough for me because I sit here and I know that way back in the beginning of the year, in 2018, we we're talking about the same issue and saying, be careful and not on one platform, multiple platforms. So it's a tough one. Listen, we may have a huge argument as to whether the Bank of Ghana is, 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 is working worked as quickly as it should, whether, but the state doesn't move the state is not an individual we do, they, you don't get the state to move that quickly and it's a fact of life mm. it, that's the fact but of, we've learned i think next mm -hmm. time they will be quicker this one if you look at next time they'll be more proactive considering what this thing is causing us we but, but so. look at yeah. even the financial crisis so. mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we're still saying oh we'll be dealing with certain sections of the financial sector mm -hmm. and we don't know when mm -hmm. this is how many uh, uh, months since uh, 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 the action was taken against UT and Capital Bank. Mm. Now you've just done the savings and loans, so but we need some time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. But let me come but to my It's Mahmoud. a tough one for me yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mahmoud, yes. You see, he was talking about um, the pro we want the state, the state to act, and then when they begin to act, then we have problems with the actions. But we are not just telling them to act, I mean, anyhow. You have to act tactically to ensure people get the, their monies. You don't act in a way that will throw the man into prison and, and, and let us go and, and lick her wounds. Is that how a, a, a responsible government should behave? Apart from that, Bank of Ghana, for instance, you, you, they tell us, they, were, they warn us several times. Why, does warning become a law? In, I mean, uh, in but, what but, country does, a warn, does warning become a law? But, 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 but Mahmoud, Mahmoud, Mahmoud let's, let, let's be, let's be, let's be. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. No, 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 you will, just a minute. Let's just put things in perspective. Okay. Okay. You do recall that when Bank of Ghana was issuing those alerts, I think there was a huge agitation from the men's good customers. Let us be. Let's do our thing. Don't we are getting. Interview. Don't it, we are getting Th our returns. One, all of that. You see, this one. It was it all over be, on social been media. Managed or it could have been orchestrated no, by the company. No, but you're dealing. How, you're you're how, being how speculative sure? now. How that sure? doesn't help. You you're being, you're that being speculative now. That doesn't help. Yes. Take it easy. They stay has Nam one in custody. You see, look at the positive side. I, I, I get it. Look I get at it. the positive I get it. side. But you see, if you want to go on t that tangent, anything on this earth is possible. The company could have hired people to do such a thing. To oh. Yes, still doing the could have. The could have will not help. Again, it's the thing. What I'm saying. Mahmoud, can I speak mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. for my own personal experience? As one of the first voices to talk about Nam one, you should look at my Twitter feed. I was hammered mm -hmm. and bashed by even celebrities, etc., in the society. Mm -hmm. That why you want to pull the man down. Mm -hmm. you, 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 he's you, a competitor. He's a, he's a competitor. Mm -hmm. You want to pull him down. Mm -hmm. You older men don't mm -hmm. want to help us young men. Mm -hmm. He's the messiah. Mm -hmm. You know, everything went on, and here we are today. Mm -hmm. It is, it is it, you know, uh, 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 I, I assure you that a lot of people said, Take your nose out of our business. Mm -hmm. Bank of Ghana, you have no... No one even almost oh, yeah. particularly insulted the he governor. Did, and then came back to apologize and came back to, to a, the, a journalist. Uh, yeah. uh, to apologize. You, uh, the, the customer said, keep your, your nose out of our business. Mm -hmm. We have a relationship with him. We are getting our money. And you see, I see elements of the same thing occurring. We don't want to prosecute him. Don't prosecute him. Allow him to give us our money. Again, the same theme is occurring again. And we don't seem to be learning from the process that it doesn't work. Right. Mahmoud, if you could wrap up with this. My, my point is that um, um, we, we are saying that we, we are not saying... You see, the point is, if you help us retrieve our monies and you want to even roast him, that would be our back case. <laughs> so the, the, the first thing first, get us our money. And you want to deal with him, I mean, if incarcerate him forever, is, is that, that's none of our business. But the other issue about um, uh, state actors, security and industry, act, uh, 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 security and industry, uh, security exchange ex and exchange commission, for instance, there is a provision in Act two, uh, 929 
of 2016. That says is that... Is it 930? It's 929. Okay. Security Industry Act 929. Right, sure, sure. The Industry which, Act. There's a provision in it which says that as and when the commission is satisfied that monies have been collected without a license or contrary to the terms of the license, the commission shall in writing instruct the company to pay those from whom the monies have been taken with even interest. Did security and exchange up, um, you, I mean, opt for that? It rather went direct, stop work, and, and, and let the poor customers go and lick their wounds. Is that how a responsible state so institution... Stop work and pay off... What, did, did they say, say that stop, that happen? Did stop they taking deposits and stop work? Stop uh, work. Uh, that's that okay. And pay... And yes. Yes. Stop going no, 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 if you say yes. stop work and okay. pay people, so my mood, you should have ensured that it happened. Mm -hmm. You understand? And before you, you ensure that it happened, you needed to try all assets of the institution you don't allow you don't just say pay and then go back to sleep the man bolts and if nobody was able to trace him until his uh, arrest even after it was only after agitation in Kumasi that we were demanding for his arrest later we heard that uh, an arrest warrant was issued then the following day we heard he, he had been arrested in Dubai is that how months before, yeah, in months Dubai. before. so yeah. the state didn't know so mm -hmm. how did he get out of this country even his private jet mm -hmm. which is one of his assets it got out of this country without it, no, no one knowing. That is too bad. This is not what we expect of a state. Even the security and industry act that I just talked about. Mm -hmm. These people are paid with their taxpayers' money. They are given luxurious vehicles such as V8, Toyota V8 with a saloon car and a mansion, and they are giving huge <laughs> salaries to ensure that companies of this nature do not spring up at all. And even if they do spring up, they are need in the bad quickly. Let me tell you. Um, in 2018, majority of these, if this com um, uh, the um, chairman of the Finance Committee of Parliament, Mark Asibe Yabua, said as far back as February 2017, they had told Men's Gold that their, their dealings was illegal and that they should, sh they should stop. Yet this company was operating still. Eh? And if it had been nipped in the bud earlier enough, I tell you, majority of the customer base wouldn't have been in this mess because a lot of over eighty percent of the customer base today went into this business. At, I mean, in twenty eighteen. So when we realized that the company was operating illegally in February twenty seventeen, if you had stopped it by now, a lot of us wouldn't be in this. I mean, so talk, the talk, state talk, talking has about failed. talking about nibbing things in the bud. How about if the customers had also refrained from, um, you know, further investing, paying heat? to those alerts. Wouldn't that have also saved the situation? I think, I think, you see, what I'm trying to say is, like Mr. Jack Jackson said, this, bad as it is, presents an opportunity for us to look at things, you know, you, you sit back and look back and you, you try to assess the situation. I think that there's a point in time where, you know, we would need to be candid with ourselves and say that, well, perhaps we should have done this. Have you reached that point, or you're still in, you know, insisting that no, we did the right thing? Uh, actually, despite we, the, the alleged, we can always reflect. We exactly. Can always so reflect. I just want to understand. We can always reflect, mm -hmm. but you see, under this circumstance, mm -hmm, in in Ghana, institutions don't work. It, it, it's a fact, and everybody knows that institutions don't work. Even the Ghana Police Service. So then, it makes it makes it makes the, the, the customers' duty even more pronounced. Yeah, then you so have I'm a second. Point. I want to make because a point. you know the regulators are not working according yeah, to yeah, your logic. Yeah, I want to make a point. Then. Let me. I'm driving at something. Because the institutions don't work. One of the reasons they don't work is that they are manipulated by the political authority. And those, are, that, those are speculations. It's a, it's a speculation, but it's a reasonable speculation. It's a very, very reasonable speculation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so, so let's, let's say, if, if Bank of Ghana wants me not to deal with men's gold, and I see ministers of state, he was awarded by this government in collaboration with Minister, Ministry of Trade and Industry and Ministry of Business Development. And he was taking round a uh, 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 he was taking round a tour in the western region by a minister, the then minister of tourism, and was uh, he was being introduced to chiefs in the western region. I mean, and he was being, this man was being asked to create more jobs. I mean, he had created more, he had created some, and he was being asked to, I mean, create more for the youth, and again getting a presidential. Uh, um, no, you, can, you can't tell me that anybody at all can get access to the presidency. It must be someone with credibility. Before someone gets there, the person would have gone through a lot of scrutiny to ensure that there's no blemish of criminality or whatsoever before the person is allowed in there. So that even if Bank of Ghana had warned me, 
I will still go with the man because the appointing authority mm. even recognizes the man and gives, him, gives the man some form of Very well. reception. Very well. Thanks, Mahmoud. Let me mm. come to uh, Mr. Mr. Kwebu. I mean, yeah. listening to Mahmoud, I, it just struck me that, you know, trying to put on that political twist to it mm -hmm. and a certain yeah. see, perceived endorsement yeah. of sorts, it just struck yeah. me that, well, the customer base of men's gold mm -hmm. is so varied. It's not mm -hmm. even... Just exactly. NPP or NDC. Oh, you I, have I, a I'm whole mix. Exactly. You have a whole mix. No, I'm not. I'm not. No, 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 no. Mamu, you don't have to. No, 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 no. You don't need to make those disclosures. We don't. That's fine. I'm just. We are addressing a problem. That's fine. I can go into my car and bring my. No, you don't need to. That's fine. I'm just saying that we need to look at this in a certain way, and how we look at it in that way is even seen from the fact that that customer base is so varied yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't have a certain group of people just being in there mm -hmm. you have all sorts of people yeah. in there mm -hmm. yet there's that seeming yeah, perception exactly. or view that there was a certain endorsement mm -hmm. we've talked about this several times here that there were certain you know people seen in pictures with him mm -hmm. and so it, it amounted to an endorsement mm -hmm. of sorts and all mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, so I've not. Do this, you have anything game. original to say in respect yes, of that? Because Mr. Jackson said he has no original. This thing attempt to, say. to make it <laughs> political <laughs> and all that, it could be a game. I don't want to be a pawn in the game. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a pawn in anybody's game. Look, you are citizens. You engage in a transaction. The transaction is gone bad. Then, you know, the normal thing we do in Ghana politicize it mm -hmm. so that you get sympathy and then you get results because as soon as a politician hears that you are saying that you're not going to vote because of this naturally Do then they, they will pander to your wishes you remember dkm mm. oh yeah the previous administration had to start paying and all that yet when this administration came in what did they say they said no there wasn't money it took a long while and all that so well he's a citizen so he has his rights all i'm just saying is that look i don't want to be a pawn in somebody's game in a, Let's just be careful. As citizens, we also need to take responsibility for certain actions that we take. Uh -huh. Let's not just push all onto the politician because the politicians are very vulnerable when it comes to votes. You see, and that's the card they are playing. Uh -huh. So, well, let's all learn from it and then move forward. Very well. We need to take a break. When we come back, we will wrap up on this issue of the return of number one and the prospect it holds for the aggrieved customers of men's vote. See you in a bit. Welcome back. You're still watching and listening to The Key Points. We're live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com, also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So we're looking at the return of Nana Piamen CEO of Men's Gold and also known as um, Nam One. Um, we have in the studio Mr. Joe Jackson, uh, Mr. Martin Kwebu, and Mahamadou Salifu, who is a member of the Coalition of Aggrieved Men's Gold Customers. So we'll be wrapping up on the conversation, but I think I, I just need to bring this to the fore. Earlier on, you know, the impression was that court proceedings in respect of Namwan's um, first appearance in court was held in camera. Well, the Daily Graphic here reports at page 13 that, and I'm quoting that, um, when the judge eventually started proceedings at about 6.30 a.m., the police prayed the court to hear the case in chambers due to its security nature, but Ms. Quay refused and decided to hear it in open court. So the Daily Graphic reporting that uh, the matter was heard in open court, contrary to earlier um, reports that it was heard in chambers. So... I, I hope that provides some clarity to the situation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kwebu, yeah. in wrapping up, mm -hmm. what, you know, we've tried to see some, I mean, like, uh, at the end of the day, you'd say to every cloud, there's a silver lining. You would want exactly. to see that in there, yeah. difficult as it is. Yes. Because we've seen, or we saw Peram, we yeah. saw DKM, we yeah. saw U.S. Tilapia. Mm -hmm. In recent times, we've I seen. Would, I would beg to take DKM out of that your list mm. because it is in a different category. Ah. D DKM was a regulated institution that went down. That went down. Due Piram, to etc. Where we're and just, DKM went down just like all these microfinance <laughs> institutions. So DKM, have, due to D certain. DKM yeah. was regulated by the central bank, and went down. Mm. That's a different sort of situation from Piram 
from men's gold from uh, loom or any of the other institutions that we're uh, talking about share one common uh characteristic way of feature <laughs> which is that they defrauded people that's it so it, me it's look at like it, yeah. because the difference yeah. is that dkm had a license but if there yeah. wasn't proper regulatory oversight and it leads to fraud that's right but then somebody comes he doesn't have a license and mm. then he also leads to mm. fraud we are looking mm. at the subs and bottom line people have lost money but there's a no, difference you're, 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 there's, there's a difference is, well, is that if yeah. you are licensed, yes. you can go to the Bank of Ghana. Mm. DKM customers mm. have received some yes, yes from yes, the charity. That's mm. fine. Even if they, they are not happy with the mm. amount mm. they've received, they've received mm. but some restitution. Sure. Mm. But the pub, uh, public resources mm. will not be used mm -hmm. for a company that is not licensed. No, that's fine. We, we so get, it's a very important sure, distinction. But, but the bottom line, like uh, Mr. Kwebu said, has to, has to do with you know the fact that people's monies mm. are How lost. lost. Yes. So we need to be alert or you know aware <laughs> when it comes to, to that angle. So question mm. then is, moving forward, how do yeah. we ensure? You talked about yeah. you know financial yeah. literacy yeah. and yeah. all, but. <laughs> At the end of the day, mm -hmm. but please hold on to that. Mm -hmm. Let me take some messages that mm -hmm. have come through. A.U. Farouk and Tamale says, good morning to you, Abner, and to your able panelists. In fact, the arrest of Nam one should not be a political, uh, he's a favoritism. He must face all the charges against him to serve as a deterrent. Um, Abbas Amogobu in Offenso said, the president must make sure the aggrieved customers of men's gold get their monies. He even promised to pay all DKM customers. Um, Efia, no, sorry, Abladeh, Efia Kuma Zongo Takrade says, Namwan allegedly uh, remanded for defrauding customers of 1.6 billion. This guy was working without any complaints before he was stopped by the government. So who did he defraud? He should quickly be granted bill to meet his debtors to see how he's going to pay them. Okay, <laughs> holding him could mean it's government who don't want him to pay. Okay, Namwan's business was clearly a Ponzi scheme and a robbing Peter to pay Paul scheme. Uh, many are also into this Ponzi business in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, look at, okay, you're mentioning other people's names here and other entities. I'm not going to say that because... I could be, you know, <laughs> <laughs> name it in a certain suit. I don't want to be there. <laughs> whatever you ent whatever you you enter into either business, your life or whatever you must you said you must sit down and ask yourself a lot of questions before engaging in that. That is Pythagoras theorem. Hmm. Nice, that's your name. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> the issue of Nam one clearly indicates that our institutions are not effective, responsive. Uh, diverse, inclusive, etc. I can test, attest to the fact that most businesses did not use the right channels in obtaining their licenses. And this is, um, I'm not sure what that word is. You said leading to all the things we see in our banking system. The only solution to this is to have a uniform interest rate. Very well. Thanks for your messages. Please keep sending them through and we will share them as we go. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, Mr. Pebble, way forward, how we deal with the situation. Good. So, Abna, you captured my thoughts where you said uh, uh, to every cloud there's a silver lining, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So, in every, so that still comes back to Mahmoud, our point that yes, uh, the prosecution, you will say, well, you are not interested. But the silver lining is that, as I keep saying, it will help bring about a quicker resolution to the payment of your debt. Because, as he well knows, and I'm sure by now his lawyers would have advised him that, look, to be able to whittle down the effect of the criminal case, he he's better advised to take steps to make sure that the customers are paid. You say it, yes. So for me, that is the first point. And number two, Mr. Jackson, borrowing from what he said, we all agree that the way this case is played out in public over these years, already we've done over a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's going to help educate all of us that look, this get rich quick attitude. We need to do something about it. We don't seem to be learning, but the difference is that I think now, because we have so much proliferation of the media, I think we are getting more education from this particular episode, if I may call it so. Mm -hmm. More than the Piram, you know, at the time oh, Piram yeah, came, mm -hmm. we had GTV alone and all <laughs> that, and not all parts of the country had TV and mm -hmm. all those things. Yeah, so, but today we have so many media and we are all educating and all that. So we are all learning very, very important lessons from it. And so, Looking uh, going forward, we should be careful about these uh, schemes that are promising super normal profits. I mean, if money were easy to make that way, I mean, we'll all be rich, mm. you see. Yeah, so that's what I would say. And that so the customers should be patient now that there's due process going on, they should think positively about it and give support to the police, the CID, so that they can move the case forward 
in the right direction. Right. I mean, speaking of, um, 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 you know, what to do to help the situation, somebody just sent a text message I read uh, mm -hmm. talking about uniform interest rates. Mr. Jackson, is that, is that feasible? Mm -hmm. no, not I, at all? No, not at all. That's sure. not that's not feasible. That goes against everything that we're, we're doing in this country mm -hmm. to, to, to promote business and competition. That's not a feasible thing. So I, I would discount that. But the issue really is, whatever you're doing with your money, the institutions are there to protect you. But number one, the, the person who can protect you best is yourself. And in all things, you must take personal responsibility. You must search for information. You must ask questions. And, and uh, you must not be seduced by uh, 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 high mm -hmm. returns. The higher the return, typically it's the higher the risk. So for me, the last word is this must educate us. This must, this must be a, a learning process mm -hmm. and and above all i mean i i i have compassion and and and, and empathy for mr uh mahmoud here and 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 when he told me about the amounts of money he's put in and 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 how much pain he's gone through i i, I understand him and i i truly for my heart hope he's paid but we have to learn something from this process and if we allow this to go on and fail to get to the point where customers of men's goods start to accept a certain level of personal responsibility mm. for what has happened and say what will i do different in this then we this whole process is just wasted we wouldn't have learned anything from it then yes ma'am would you? yeah no, let, tell let us me, what let the me. coalition is seeking yeah, to uh, do uh, uh, okay uh, before i get there uh, uh, earlier, we talked about the discrepancy between uh, the Minister of uh, Finance's claim as to how much men's go owes us, which is uh, around 200 million Ghana cities. And then the CID prosecuting them one on behalf of uh, the, mini uh, the, the government, uh, the state, saying that number one is being charged for defrauding the people of 1.6 billion. billion. So why these discrepancies? Uh, and the other issue about let, let, let me not, you know, suggest that I'm speaking for the Minister of Finance, yeah. but yeah. I think the Minister of Finance came out earlier. Uh, and okay. time, I mean, clearly there's been some investigations. I would want to believe that the police have come up with certain or have, have discovered certain facts that would now suggest that, yes, it's no longer 200 million. But, I mean, anything can happen within a space of time. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, I, I, I would like to know the kind of investigation done in between the time the Minister of uh, Finance mentioned the 200 million and today that the uh, CID is prosecuting uh, number one. Because at the time the Minister of uh, Finance mentioned the 200 million, we had already, uh, they had already, we had already furnished them with our details and they were in the. And what was the figure when you did? Um, well, when we collected it, it was it was uh, around three hundred million. So clearly, even million. the two hundred million, the finance uh, minister mentioned was million. pay your own records, not the so necessary. So why the, the discrepancies within even state institutions? That is mind-boggling. And you put that aside. Um, Nam one, when he went to court um, based on the Horizon Royal uh, uh, matter, he was granted bail. My brother Martin Pebu here is a lawyer. And he knows very well that if you are granted bail and you meet the bail condition, mm -hmm. you are free mm -hmm. from that moment mm -hmm. until the determination of the substantive case. Mm -hmm. Namwat was granted bail, and then uh, we expected that, okay, when he was granted bail, well, he could be brought in because at that point he was free. He, he could be brought in by the government through Interpol. The government still kept him there in detention. Later, you mean in Dubai? In Dubai. The government kept him. Was it the government? Yeah, it, the government He was Interpol. subject to mm -hmm. Dubai. We don't know Dubai. He was subject laws. to Dubai and, laws and, and everything. Yeah, Dubai how does Dubai that come? How does the that affect the? Yeah. Yes. Clearly, let's 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 deal with the facts. Mm -hmm. He was there mm -hmm. on charges. Yes. Subject to the security agencies there, and subject to their laws. Okay. Government in Ghana here could not have reached overstep their boundaries to go and make orders saying that he should come to Ghana. That, that, 
he's on bail, yes, but that doesn't mean he could come. You do recall that there was a certain delegation that was sent there yes, to yes. find out exactly what the situation yeah, yeah. was. And then they came back and said, well, this is the ar arrangement or the agreement they reached with the officials there, that when he's done with everything, they would send him here to face charges here. And that is what has happened. So when you say government should have gone for him after he was granted bail, it's, I'm sorry, okay, but, but it doesn't okay, work I, like I that. I get your point. I get your point. So if it is the case that the laws in Dubai, uh, even when you are granted bail, you cannot move around, then that would be another matter. Mm -hmm. Or later he won the substantive case and he was still un in detention. That, that, that's their law. <laughs> I mean, they were dealing with that. No, we no, don't know. But we are told uh, he was in detention of the Interpol. Mm -hmm. yes. And the Interpol is through Ghana. Interpol yeah. arrested him through Ghana. Yes. Is, yeah, based do, on our request. It, based on our request. Yes. Our request. So if he, win, he, he wins the substan or he's exonerated in the mm. substantive case mm. and he was still under detention in Dubai, uh, uh, what, what could that mean? Mm. One actually, That's why he's he should have been there. No, no, no. It was even after the appeal. Mm. The company had to even go yeah. on appeal. Yeah. Until but the appeal case was exhausted, but he, was appeal, in he was still exactly. there. So, so where's the problem? So right? I, my, my, okay, it's not too much of a problem. Mm -hmm. But the point is, mm -hmm. you're if, seeking clarification. As yes, well. if, if there's a you win, uh, the, he was exonerated. Yeah. Why? Why was he still in detention? Uh, but like you yourself, you said you said they hadn't exhausted the pro the, the, the process. Well, appeal. Yeah, appeal. Oh, you and we are not well, Dubai well, lawyers. Well, well, we don't well, know well, the well, laws well, in Dubai. My, my brother, you, you, uh, you have said it all. We are, yeah, you are not a Dubai, Dubai lawyer. But <laughs> I, if you were in Ghana, you know that yeah. if someone w is exonerated. But that's Ghana, <laughs> different uh, from so, so Dubai. Uh, let's put like that aside. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's put that aside. But finally, 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 when he arrived in Ghana, our expectation was that we will have some engagement with him. Mm. To, uh, so that we can propose a, a, a payment mm. plan going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that, that process, we expect that um, we expected that it will be facilitated by the government. Mm -hmm. But now that he has been taken uh, through some legal processes, mm -hmm. well, my, my brother says I should be hopeful. So yes, you exactly, you it's a due process. Yeah, yeah, so let, so, let's hope that yes, yes, the government due. will quicken the steps mm -hmm. towards recovery of our monies and yes. nothing less. Yes. Because this government. We have to hold the government vicariously <laughs> liable for this. But the anyways. government is liable. Until we get our money, we have to hold the government feet to the fire of accountability. Very it well. has to account for the government's failure. Be liable for Mahmoud, it has Mahmoud, to be accounted for its failure to protect yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's fine. Government. I mean, I think the debate and the discussions mm. can go on beyond this point. And indeed, it will go on. But we need to say um, thank you to the panelists uh, you know, for coming in to help us look into this very important subject of the return of Nam One and what that holds for the many, many, many aggrieved customers of Men's Gold. Um, in the studio with me have been uh, Mr. Joe Jackson. He's the Chief Operations Officer, Dalex Finance, Mr. Martin Pebu, a private legal practitioner, and Mahamudu Salifu, who is a member of the Coalition of Aggrieved Men's Gold Customers. We'll take a break. When we come back, we go into the power sector to see exactly what is happening with the independent power producers. We'll see you shortly. Thank you. Welcome back. This is still The Key Points. We're live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7 and online at 3news.com. Also on our Facebook page, TV3 Ghana. So just come by with a conversation about uh, the finance industry, if you like, looking specifically at the return of Nana Plamenta. Uh, CEO of Men's Gold. Now we're turning our attention to matters pertaining to the power sector. This week, uh, the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Consumers issued a statement, and in that statement, they impressed upon Power Distribution Services PDS, the successor to ECG, to pay all outstanding debts owed its members, or they would shut down their plants. Now they're talking about debts in the sum of 700 million. Um, 400 accrued as of the time ECG was being taken over by PDS and uh, post that takeover some 300 uh, has also come to top up making it 700 million US dollars. In the studio with me we have Mr. Adam Mutawakilu. He is the Honorable Member of Parliament for Damongo constituency and serves as a ranking member on Parliament's Mines and Energy Committee. Next to him is Mr. Kujopoku, he's an energy expert. And to my right, we have 
Mr. Kwame Jantua. He is a senior member of the Convention People's Party CPP and an energy consultant. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. It's good to morning. have you good here. Good to see you. Good to see you too. I hope you're well. I'm very well, thank you, and hope you are too. <laughs> By grace, I'm breathing, so I'm fine. <laughs> you thank God. Great. So, we are back to the table to look at matters concerning energy and power. I mean, this is one of the very, very um, key issues to you know the populace because we know what the implications of power outages are. We don't want to get to that point, and so anytime any issue raises its head bordering on the possibility of us being plunged or the country being plunged into darkness, then we are all concerned. So this week when the chamber came up with that statement, obviously um, everybody was interested or concerned about that. I'll start with you, Honorable. Um, PDS taking over from ECG under the concession agreement and everything, the hopes, you know, or the objective there was that, well, it's going to turn around things financially, operationally, and a whole lot of, um, you know, issues. Then, barely five months after that takeover, mm. we hear, you know, the Chamber of Independent Power Producers talk about, you know, this huge debt that is owed them, mm. and they are threatening to, you know, pull the plugs if that debt is not settled. What, what, what is going on? Yeah, thank you very much, and good morning to our cherish U.S. and more especially the good people of Damango constituency. Yeah, your earlier statement said to have, well, already we have Dumson going on. In my, at my place, I had Dumson last <laughs> night. I'm aware around Speed Test Road, there's, uh, they, they didn't have lights mm. last night. So it is already going on, and it didn't start now. Since last year, uh, we, as a minority, have made it clear that the financial position of the state-owned uh, agencies, uh, enterprises in the power sector right. is so terrible, and if we don't take time, we'll plunk into darkness. And we made it clear that it is as a result of financial uh, problems or liquidity challenges. The minister earlier said technical. Uh, power, the that has always been the debate, trip. finance or technical. Finance Eventually, or technical. <laughs> in May, first May, Gritko came out that if it is not supported by the government did not pay their, their debt, which is about $171 million, they might not be able to transmit the power that is needed. And now IPPs to have come out. And we have made it as minority over and over and over again. So we see this as a vindication of government denial that it is technical when we say that it is financial. Now, uh, the PDS uh, ECG concession, we have what we call the box supply agreement. That implies that ECG already had power purchasing agreements mm -hmm. with uh, the IPPs, and they are required to sell this power to PDS. PDS will now sell the power to customers, take the money, pay back to ECG, ECG will now pay the IPPs. But our informa the information we have is that for a very, since PDS took over, the payment to ECG is nothing to write home about. So they are not able to pay the IPPs. And once they are not able to pay the IPPs, the Chamber of uh, Independent So is it a collection Police, issue? Because you're saying, so they would need to, you know, sell or I mean supply any, uh, the power to the consuming public and then take now so whatever revenue they get then they need to pay back but what? we are not getting so what what is the problem yeah that's what I'm saying mm. I think that uh, when you do co collection uh, we know very well that we have technical and commercial losses, losses yeah. that ECG earlier uh, has been and that is one of one the of reasons, reasons why exactly. PDS came in collection has not been hundred percent mm. We know there are forex losses, especially that the CD became a fugitive, uh, contrary to what uh, Dr. Baumia promised, Vice President. Yeah, there are forex losses because you pay them in dollars, but you collect it in CDs. So when the CD depreciates, you need more CDs mm. to now pay. But is the extent of retention? I uh, the IPPs will not expect 100% payment because they know the challenges that is going on. 
but they also have commitment monthly or weekly to their lenders. So if it happens that for three months you take the money and think that PDS, I'll take the whole money because I need it, they will complain because the lenders will put pressure on them to pay as planned. Mm -hmm. And that is why I thank the Chamber of Independent Power Producers for coming out. I know some civil society have disputed that the IPPs didn't ask him to do that. But any payment arising from the publication, would the IPPs take it or not? They are glad to take in it. And as a citizen, you must fight for the, 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 those who cannot come out and speak. So I believe that PDS was taking more than 90% of the money they accrue. And we need to investigate it. It's very important. It is very important that we need to investigate why they decide to take all. Is it because... Is that the case, that they, take, they, they, they rake in so much but retain quite a, a substantial part yes, of it? Or that yes. they are unable to no. collect as much? Because at, at least what ECG used to collect, you maintain it. it you've not changed customers. Mm. Even this time, the collection rate should improve. So if it is not improving, we will have an assessment mm -hmm. soon as a committee. And we have made them, before we approve the uh, agreement, to give us the targets. Commercial losses, what do you expect to reduce? Uh, technical losses, the investment that you need mm -hmm. to do. We have all those milestones. And we will measure them with that. And that will be our recommendation, whatever be to government. Mm. So PDS must honor its obligation. Now, it comes to one point that the government came out and said, oh, we've paid 200 million to ECG. We need to ask several questions, and government must be clear. Already government owe ECG mm -hmm. netco. Is it paying for the amount that it owes these agencies? For example, ECG, 200 million Ghana cities. Are they paying it because they already owe over 100, uh, 700 million Ghana cities? Different from IPP. So, the government must come out clear. If it is paying its own debt, then it must fast track it and pay it. PDS must pay ECG to pay the IPPs. Mm. So, government debt is there. And the legacy. I, and I, <laughs> no, not legacy. Mm. MDS consume mm -hmm. power. They are not paying. Government has guaranteed to pay. Government is not paying. So it's different from the legacy debt. And as I speak with Netco, I know about 804 million Ghana cities. Government owe them as here. Yeah, government hasn't paid. Mm. ECG over 700 million Ghana cities. Government owe them, hasn't paid. So this 200 million Ghana You don't know city. which one it's going towards. Government must come out clear to let us know. Very well. A, a PDS must be compelled to make its obligation periodically. And there are certain things government has done that, but, that but is quite worrying. Speaking of the, the, the PDS's obligations, is there anything under the concession agreement for PDS to actually disclose maybe on a monthly basis or even quarterly basis, how much it has collected and for, and it, is there any agreement that says, well, upon collection, you take a certain percentage or it's at PDS's discretion? There was this what, uh, cash waterfall mechanism that was developed under NDC, but before we implemented it, uh, we left power. And on 1st February, 2017, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Akufuado, promised in the State of the Nation address that they will implement that cash waterfall mechanism. That means that you appropriate the, your, whatever you receive to the various stakeholders. Is that which year was this? 2017, February, the State of the Nation address. But that was before the... The, the, the process to implement it started before mm. MPP came to power. And in February 2017, President Nana Akufuado made a promise to implement it. But I'm saying that was before PDS took over. That so, was before. So were they bound by that earlier? It wasn't implemented and it has not been implemented. So are they bound by it is a question for them to even comply with that? It has not been implemented. So, so there's the, no obligation The, the retention is by discretion. Okay. Supported by government. Mm. That is the point. But if that what, uh, cash waterfall mechanism was applied 
uh, was implemented, do we know that 10% must go to PDS, 2% should go to IPPs, 50% should go to ECG, and therefore whatever is collected is appropriated accordingly. So you're saying currently it's at the discretion of PDS. That's what you're saying. It's, it's at the, the discretion, discretion of PDS. PDS. Very well. Let me... With the protection of government. Well, government has the right to ensure that the right thing is done. Everybody gets something small. So and that the discretion is not absolute. Not. Yes. I mean, there needs to be some checks, if you like, checks coming in from government. And ensuring that the right thing is done. Because if you siphon, uh, if you uh, suffocate the IPPs, we'll get back to sure. doing so. And we don't, we don't want to get <coughs> to that And we point. know, let me just make this sure, line. In, that, in Parliament, we approve, when we're approving the concession, we had 45 condition precedents. Mm. That is what must be fulfilled before takeover. PDS has been, and government has been able to fulfill only 29. And but then there's a takeover unilaterally, already, or there's no takeover? No, that before they take over, mm -hmm. they, they only have fulfilled 29, with 45. 45. And government on its own has decided to turn the system left to conditions subsequent without recourse to parliament. That is a breach of the law. Well, we will be looking into that. Could you? <clears throat> <laughs> it's a mouthful. <laughs> well, well, to start with, I'm yeah. interested yeah. in what, 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 let me take honorable, just a minute. Let, let me take it step by step. I know, but if he you ended, that, you confuse me. I'm not going to, I'm just see. he ended on a certain note. Yes, so I just the want, cash waterfall, I'll take it from No, there. beyond the cash waterfall. He's talking about 45. Condition precedent. Yes, and that had to be met. That there was a. Now 29. Now who, because the now question now who then is. The parliamentary subcommittee. Very well, so carry on, yes. We wrote to them. Myself, Mr. Jantua, and ASAP went and had a meeting with Mr. Mikuduka. Wrote, did a submission to parliament and said, look, this thing that the minister of Nobel Jakun has presented, you guys should turn it down. Don't approve it. They didn't listen to us. They went ahead and approved it. So there was parliamentary approval. There was parliamentary approval. And they agreed and approved it. Look, there were a lot of holes that we punched in that document that was presented to parliament. Myself, Mr. Jantua, and ASAP. They did not listen to us. So let's put that on the side and let me now address some but of that, the things but that, that... that raises serious issues course, about does, the scrutiny that Parliament... Have, are have, you denying have, that Parliament... We, the, we it, did, it, it received parliamentary yes, approval? We did our best. We take inputs from everybody. Everybody. So you're denying that... We are not denying. So there was parliamentary approval? There was parliamentary approval. If Parliament approves that condition A, B, C, D must be fulfilled before taking over, and we give the approval. Then you go there, you say A, B, fulfilled. The rest is after we hand over. Mm -hmm. That is a bridge. But that's what law. he's saying. They objected to that, saying that this, this thing as presented it's has issues. And so let's Do not. not pass it. But then subsequent to their objections, it you, was passed. And unless you're saying that didn't happen, because that, that would really be useful information. Did it or did it not? They did. So we they, pick information, we work on it, we interact with. The, the, the minister and the other agencies. Mm. We seek clarification, we seek assurances, and we implement that. A breach of the law should be taken on. Mm -hmm. Do you get my point? Definitely, which is why I'm interested and that is in, why, this, in this thing about Yeah, that, that is why yeah. we need assurances. Some of them, when they breach it, we take it on. If but, not, mm -hmm. we say, okay, you, you breach it, therefore, then we will not pass it. Well, I'm not going to carry on. Clearly, yes. Some of the things like carry, yeah. We can educate our viewers and understand some of the things that's going on. For some of these things, for me, I'm very passionate about it. And Mr. We John all are. You see, look, <laughs> let me address from the top to down, because if not, I get confused. The cash waterfall. Yes, my honorable is right. The cash waterfall was a program that was to be implemented. When PDS was taken over, PDS said, look, there are PPAs held by ECG that they are not going to take all the power that PPA, uh, the PPA has with ECG. They are only going to take a certain amount of power mm. to distribute. So they don't want the water. Um, the so water, that would be a waterfall, variation of a, those a, agreements. A, a, a then. Gash, it was an agreement. The cash waterfall was a proposal. Mm. Okay, but PDS said, "Look, this is what I will do. If I take two thousand megawatts from ECG, I will put a guarantee. Okay, a performance bond." cash back to say that if I take 2000, I'll pay you back 2000. So the IPPs give me what I need, and, me what I I need and I'll pay for it. So that ECG does what they want with the IPP. Go bear in mind, the, the, the problem that people don't understand is that all the PPAs, as my brother earlier said, sits with ECG, restructured ECG. ECG has two mandates. To, they have they've been given an export license to export power to the uh, neighboring countries mm -hmm. and also provide those power um, to PDS to distribute. Mm -hmm. So PDS said, look, let me not go with this cash waterfall. 
I will give you a performance bond for whatever power you give me. So now, whatever power that PDECG gives... I know, but you're smiling. Uh, whatever power that PDECG gives PDS, PDS post a guarantee mm. that they will pay back 100% back to ECG for that amount. So that clears out why the cash waterfall was not implemented. PDS objected to the implementation of it. Now, let me go on to the issue of the money is being going from ECG to PDS and why there's been a delay. When ECG was working, they were being able to do weekly and bi-weekly uh, 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 transfer to the IPPs. And then they do the reconciliation as they go along. Bear in mind, when PDS came from 1st of March, PDS said, look, what we are going to do is that we cannot be doing the weekly and the bi-weekly that ECG was doing. Mm -hmm. We need to now get to the end of the month and at the end of the month, we will reconcile with what power we have taken and then transfer that money to ECG. Then ECG will also have to do their reconciliation and transfer the money to the IPPs. It is not true that PDS have not given that money to ECG. PDS has paid what they've collected to ECG. But I think the question has to do with how much they, let me, they I'll ought get, to okay, pay. Okay, let me get to that. Which is, yeah. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Sure. Okay, so that has been sent. Now, there's a, a, a slight problem. Again, some of the things that we objected to with this concession was the things that were being put in place for this thing to be able to work. One of the conditions that MIDA had was that there was supposed to be a certain tariff that was to be in place before ECG, before PDS takes off from ECG. Mm. It was based on that tariff, that the KPIs that was given to P PDS was to come in play. So you tell PDS that, look, achieve X, Y, Z. And to achieve this reduction in technical losses, to achieve this reduction in uh, commercial losses, to be able to keep the lights on, I'm going to give you X cents. And based on that, you achieve these KPIs. Mm. And that excellence will be in place by the time you take over from ECG. As at first March, the government and PRLC have not agreed to tariff. that tariff coming in. So the government on the agreement, the government has not fulfilled its part of the agreement. So there's something called CP4. And that is something that some of us felt it was weird because it was an agreement signed between Ministry of Finance, P, uh, Ministry of Finance, NETCO, PULC, no, not PULC, ECG, PDS, and I think NETCO. Then they now agreed that PDS, because the condition subsequent, which my brother is talking about, for the tariff to be set have not been put in place, they will keep a certain money. It was money. a precondition, but it became a pre, uh, pre, pre sub, <laughs> condition subsequent. Subsequent. Yes, and because that has mm -hmm. not been met, because the government has not met its side of putting the right tariff in place by March, PDS when will they now, were to take over. When they were take over, as per the CP4, which is the agreement they now subsequently put in place, PDS will now collect all the monies from the revenue generated, mm -hmm. keep one twelve of that money, okay? Then the rest of the money, they would have to inform Ministry of Finance and Ministry of Finance will tell them what to do with it. So there was a CP4, which came subsequent to, to it took over, are you saying, so the CP4 came to replace, as it were, it varied. It, it, it became an annex or addendum to the existing agreements that was there. And they then informed PULC of the agreement that they have put in place. So that was what, in March, if you realize that there was a, a bit of fracas in the system because there was no liquidity, that was the first month that PDS had taken over. And they needed to now wait to the end of the month to see what they will accumulate so that they will now be able to calculate their 112 out of it to make up for the variance. Because if you give me a certain rate that you're going to give me before I take over and you're not being able to put that rate in uh -huh. place, then you need to compensate me as per the agreement. So that was what was causing what. Uh, uh, my brother on is saying that they are keeping the money. They're not keeping the money. It's Ministry of Finance that put that in place for them to retain the money and inform Ministry of Finance. Ministry of Finance will tell them what to do with it. So that answer your question on that. Now let so, me. So, what to do with the money that's so collected? That. So money has been. Money so what is? Yes, yes, yes. Money is collected. So it's not all it's money collected. Yes, and the ministry so is to tell them what to the do. The Ministry with of it. Finance yeah. will tell PDS what to do with it. Now, not all money collected were transferred over 
to ECG. So like I said, that agreement was made, condition subsequent. Then in PLC was informed later. PLC was even upset about it because why would you go and agree this mm -hmm. among Ministry of Finance and the parties? And guess what? I've mentioned it on this platform before. That agreement and that letter that was sent to PLC, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Energy, the minister was not copied. So, so which raises those concerns, raises but at least an issue that is worth looking into. Definitely. Oh, but looking mm -hmm. into is definitely the case. But let me now go on to address some of the things my brother mm -hmm. said. Look, when you say that there is indebtedness, from first March going forward, the Ministry of Finance, the government through Ministry of Finance, ring fenced all the debt that existed in the energy sector. Mm -hmm. So PDS took a clean slate. There was no indebtedness liability transferred to PDS. So okay. everything... It's in the agreement they are not supposed Well, to that's fine. So everything that was owed by ECG, the monies that were owed are made of various trenches. Mm -hmm. MDA, indebtedness, Ghana Water, sure. uh, under recoveries, subsidies, first line, and all those. All those monies, Ministry of Finance took over. So when the IPP, the Chamber of you know, Independent Power Producers, say that as of the time uh, PDS was taking over from ECG, they owed them um, $400, 400 million. million and post that, they've accrued yeah, 300 million. What does that mean then? It, if, it, if, that, if that does not, they were not, to see, on a clean let me, state. Let, The numbers are being bought about by somebody just making up numbers. The actual numbers are not those numbers because there's been monies. And last week, Ministry of Finance released uh, payment uh, schedules that they've been paying the Asoglis and the car powers from January to now. So you're saying that, it, that the figure put out by the Chamber of Independent it's not Power producers no, this week it, it's is not def true? No, it's definitely not true. That's definitely not true. Now, let me, like I said, let, let's try to stay on... But why would they put it out there if Because, true? look, let me be honest, and let's address this, this chamber thing. They don't represent anyone. They don't... Re I, I put it on record. They don't represent anyone. The gentleman works for Asogli. All the numbers that he has, he called ECG, pretending that he's calling from Asogli, and they these gave are, him... These no, are serious, I, I, no, serious I'm, I'm allegations putting, I'm, putting, I'm putting on record on, on... Listen, myself and Mr. Jantua are sitting here. There is an official chamber for the industry called Chamber of Electricity Ghana, formed by myself and Mr. Jantua. And we have done all the consultations with all the IPPs. And you're saying that you represent we have not, the no, stakeholders no, 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 in there. No, 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 no. You see, the reason we have not come out is that we have done a draft constitution. We have circulated it to all the IPPs. They are looking at it. So, Until they sign on to the draft so constitution, I cannot even say that I represent well. them. So currently, but what I'm saying is that is nobody, there, is there, there a body is that, no, there So this is chamber no, here is not usurping powers that uh, well, it doesn't have. Is that what you're you saying? You can call him and ask him who has signed on to his chamber. Mm. I'm saying it on authority that Car Power, AXA, Gensa, Send Power, everybody I have spoken to, and we've done all the consultation with the minister, with all the stakeholders, with PLC, Mr. Opam, and everybody who we need to talk to, we have spoken to. And we are waiting. The reason we've not launched Chamber of Electricity Ghana is that we have not gotten you're the signatures that we internal, need. We are doing our internal consultation. Well. So, so we have not come out to issue some of these statements. No, but, but you uh, see, I, 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 I hope you appreciate um, where I'm coming from when I say these are serious allegations you're making. Because this is a statement that has been put out categorically. There are names in there. Somebody claiming to be the CEO. Who works for Sogli Ghana anyway? That's what, he works for Sonia Sogli. Well, th that is well, not see, indicated look, from the statement. But I'm in saying, a not, in a so if you're saying this, just a minute. If you're saying the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Bulk Consumers do not represent or do not have the money to represent the players in the industry, that, 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 that's a serious statement. How is it? Because for, for, let me tell you something. In the in an era of free formation and free association, anybody can register anything. In the era of 24-hour news media, yeah, where you can register, but to make it legitimate, well, you should have the mandate of the people. What, 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 where is the legitimacy? The camp is registered. Registered, he puts a letterhead and writes a statement, and the media is on the media frenzy on what they put out there. There are a lot of things that are put out there that are not true. Mm. I'm when look, I'm one of the few people in this country. What wakes me up in the morning is what people put out on the media because everybody's calling Kujipoku to get his reaction. So what I'm telling you is that when I get these things at six o'clock in the morning and I call the people involved. And everybody tells me, Kojo, there has been no meeting. We have not told anybody to go and issue this threat to government. Yes, like my brother said, if that statement is made, then indebtedness is there. 
would the money that result from the payment wouldn't they take it they will take it so they they don't care but what i'm trying to add to the matter is that if somebody goes out there and issues this thing about in eight days we'll pull the plugs it's not that easy you it's cannot pull the plug you the, cannot do that to pull the plugs and shut your machines down do you know what it means every ipp has a bond that bond is given to you that in failure of government paying you, call on the bond. Mm. When you call on the bond, what it means is that you are shutting down and leaving the country and terminating your PPA. Well. So if you come up with some of those things, you cannot threaten your employer. Mm. I mean, you raise a number of things, both yourself and Honorable. You talk about the cash waterfall. Because I wanted to, you wanted to raise Clear. Most, I'll give it. I'll give yeah, it. Just, most of him, just, whatever I raise, he has come back to that. He's come. So money, monies were not paid to mm -hmm. him. He has explained that truly. So money were retained. Two. What for? We don't know. Yes, were retained. They were no, not no, given no, out. I'm, I'm but you yes. said the ministry is telling them what to Two. do with it. No, what? Yes, because but I told you what is for. It's for the shortfall Two. in the price that was Two. given. I made it clear that some condition precedent were converted to conditions mm -hmm. subsequent. No, but he didn't dispute it's that. It's true. Let me. I'm now building mm -hmm. on that. If they are supposed to provide a guarantee, such that when ECG is not paid what it has supplied. ECG can fall Falling on that night. guarantee. Why was it not kicking? Because it was not there. It was just a paper. No money. That is the reason. So ECG cannot even exercise that right by falling on that guarantee. There's nothing to fall on. There's nothing to fall on. They only have a paper to fall on. It's too early to do that. No, I'm saying... <laughs> no, his, that is what I'm saying. His, Who said that the if ECG is not that's paid... You get yeah, I'm just, but I'm just it pushing it. Well, well, that's fine. Yeah. Because there is only paper guarantee, no liquidity. <laughs> Very well. Let me turn to <laughs> Mr. Jantua here. Mr. Jantua, what's happening? This chamber of independent power producers and bulk consumers, first of all, do they even represent the players in there who have a stake in in the issues that are being raised, for which reason we are even giving it some attention to even discuss it in the first place or not. And then whatever issues yeah. you want to deal with, talk about the cash, cash waterfall and the CP4 coming after Atu Acid where very certain provisions in the main agreement. Abana, you see, the cocktail of issues with the electricity sector is just so enormous. <laughs> the World Bank this week indicated that the way the energy sector is strained with so much debt, they can compare to the financial sector. How do we sort it? One thing I don't understand: we've had a, a, a we've had accumulated debt over twenty over a decade, two point two billion by twenty fifteen. Yes, by twenty fifteen, two point two billion. This is over two decades, one. Two, we decided that, okay, how are we going to handle this debt? So we brought in ESLA. Now, in bringing in ESLA, we then signed agreements where we are paying for uh, power generated that we are not using, mm. nearly 1,000 mm. megawatts. We are paying nearly 25 million every month. How? Does Tesla help us sort this out? Huge sums of money. Then you look at Gridco. You look at uh, 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 all the VRE, ECG, the monies that are owed between these institutions. Quite a huge sum. Ghana gas, quite a huge sum. And then you now bring in the IPP. So you can see that it is a trajectory from the owing of these big institutions right down to the IPPs. Mm. How do we sort it? We are talking, this one is saying this, waterfall, this one is saying this. Is that the solution? The question then is, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't that one of the reasons why we came in with this whole concession agreement, have PDS, so that it comes into exactly. deal with everything? But it seems we are and, back to that and point. That is, and that is what I was coming mm. to. What, PDS was brought in because they said ECG was not effective. Mm -hmm. ECG was not able to collect. So we're bringing in PDS and they would now streamline things. Aren't we in the same position? It may be early days yet, but at least given the things or the issues, it, what I'm saying is given the issues that preceded, you know, even getting into the agreement itself for yes. me is, 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 is worrying yes. that certain preconditions were not met. Yes. 
certain precondition that had to be met were yes. not met yes. and we had to turn some of them into why so exactly the point why so why Who's did we agree to Who's that responsibility was it to make sure that everything was in place before we started the 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 the, the, the so the even before we embark on the journey we have these issues exactly to deal with. we have these issues and who suffers you and i suffer the energy sector can bring this country to a halt mm -hmm. full stop and so abna i feel it's not politics. It's not politics. The government should try as much as possible to bring everybody around the table. Look, we have parliament. Have they been able to solve it? We have the executives. Have they been able to solve it? We have the different operating uh, 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 institutions. Have they been able to sort it? We've sat here on the media and <laughs> talked about it. Have we been able to sort it? And it is a cancer that can now kill the country. So what's the way forward? Let's put everything aside and let's sit down. And if we say, and I keep saying this and I, I don't know. But sit what down to what, to, to what end? I no, mean, if you sit, sit down, down, you agree on things and then you backtrack, wait, you don't do wait, the things wait, you need to do well, at all. We need to stick to it. We need to stick to it. Government owes a lot of money to ECG stroke PDS. Mm. What are we doing about that? And, and I, I say, if we have to use all our oil revenue to sort this out. Let's do it. Why? Look, sitting here right now, if these lights go off, is there a program? Parliament, when they are sitting, lights go out, is there a program? If we then want to go the Nigerian way, where because of inefficiency in our electricity sector, we bring in generators, does that not affect fuel? So it's a vicious cycle. So we need to sit down and discuss this thing thoroughly. Thoroughly, it's not that and PD has come in and they've been no, let's sort this thing out because it is affecting all of but us. But how do we sort it out? Is a By talking and putting the decisions we make into line. If we say, okay, um, I, I know that the ministry is trying to do something about the uh, IPPs that have been signed, and I'm sure I'm not sure whether they have done the press conference yet, but I was privy to some of the issues that they were trying to sort out in terms of uh, the debts that are owed, mm -hmm. how they can uh, 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 bring down some of the capacity charges that would help them make sure that it's in line so that they can pay something. But the debt is huge. We have this 2.2 billion. Then we have the IPPs also, their debt. What does all that come to? The 25 million we are paying a month, how can we stop paying them? Because that 25 million can go directly in paying some of exactly. these debts. So why are we just sitting down and not doing anything about it? Now, I don't want to apportion blame to, and this government came and this, this government. We are faced with the problem now. Let's try and sort it. Mm. Now, you ask the question, where does the president come in? Because some will say that, this Did is I ask that question? No, I will say huh? some. I'm not saying you. <laughs> okay. Some will say, where does the president come in? Okay. Because they will say, well, it's up to the, the sector, minister. sector minister. It's up to probably the committee yes. in parliament. But it's also, for me, up to the president. Why? Because he is the one who fingers will point at if Dumso comes back. When Dumso came in the last government, who were they pointing fingers at? It wasn't Mutawakilu. It wasn't yeah. Ojopoku. It was President Mahama. And so because he's the one people point fingers at, he needs to take the bull by the horns and say, look, all of you, come, let's see, sort this thing out. It brings confidence into the system. At the present moment, I don't think there's confidence in the system. If the World Bank, international bodies are saying that, Ghana, watch your energy sector. The debts are too high. It sends a signal. Mm. Something should be done about it. Very well. We need to take a break at this point. Yes, Honorable, I'll come back to you when yeah. we come back so from the break. Yes, the we'll take a quick break. We'll be back shortly. All Welcome back. Network. This is Check the key points, the and yeah, we are live. Right. We're live, honorable. <laughs> We're live on TV3. We're also live on 3 FM 92.7. Obviously, honorable wants to start with his submissions even before I, you know, do the 
needful here. But yes, yeah, so we're looking at the energy sector or the power sector where um, this week some statement was issued in respect of debts owed independent power producers to the tune of $700 million. And we're looking at exactly what the situation is, how we can, you know, get the situation rectified if need be. I mean, if, if, if it can be rectified at all, we are trying to understand exactly what the terms or the obligations of the PDS is within the um, context of the concession agreement and all. Honorable, you wanted to yeah, come yeah, in here. Yeah, first with of all, I wanted yeah. to address some, uh, to highlight some few things my big brother has said uh, in respect of the debt. You know, he spoke about the legacy debt and why ESLA came in. ESLA came in December 2015. Mm -hmm. As a result, during that time, we did an assessment of the debt in the energy sector, and it came up to $2.4 billion. Yeah. Going forward with the ESLA... That was 2015. 2015. 2015. Going forward with the ESLA, mm -hmm. it was made clear that, that the powers... 1992 to 2015. 1992 mm -hmm. to yes. 2015. Yes. It was made clear that mm -hmm. this ESLA should be able to leverage the power sector and uh, agencies taking most of the debt out right. so that they can do. As a result, by end 2016, the debt reduced to 2.2 billion. So there was a reduction because the Minister of Power and the uh, Minister of Finance in two years uh, Tekpe, under President Mahama had paid 250 million dollars. <coughs> so that is the decline. Come 2017, apart from the ESLA that the government has used to raise bonds to pay, it has accumulated several, totally almost two billion. If you take ENI from October to March, October 2018 to March 2019, about 160 million dollars. Uh, Car power, 150 million dollars. IPPs now, 700 million dollars. Ghana gas, 735 million dollars. And I can count. Netco, 162 million dollars. So. The problem is that uh, ESLA came in to ensure that we clear off the legacy there and to be on our feet. Right. But under President Nanao Kufuado, that hasn't happened. We are accumulating more within two and a half years, about two billion, compared to 1992 to 2015, 2 which is 2.4. Yeah. So the debt is accumulating. The next one is excess capacity. Uh, my brother spoke about about 1,000 megawatts. But we must know that we always pay for excess capacity because there must always be what we call reserve margin. But to the extent that we are paying how much? I'm, 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 I'm analyzing it. No, I'm analyzing it. That's just for gas. That's for gas. No. Yes. I'm analyzing it. That You are talking of fuel component. No, Look, the, the, the take or pay component, mm -hmm. what my brother mentioned, was that 25 is, million for take or pay that we are paying for that gas. I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying that I'm looking at the megawatts. Mm -hmm. Excess capacity of 100,000 mm -hmm. uh, megawatts. We must know that in power generation, you don't just produce what you need. Because there can be a breakdown. Hydrological climate change can let a Kosovo dry out. So you must have what we call reserve margin, which is about 20%. So, and the peak of the peak demand. So if you take the peak demand of 2,700 megawatts, 20% mm. of that is 540 megawatts. So whether you like it or not, this must be a stamp sure. You pay for it whether you like it or not. So if it is 100 megawatts, it will be led with 460. Now let's look at government policy. Rural electrification under President Mama, he indicated that by 2020, access to rural electrification should be 100%. So as a result, there was an acceleration. 2015, 75% rural uh, coverage, access to electricity. 2016, it came to uh, about 80.5 and that. This government had come and they have rescheduled the policy from 2020 universal access to electricity to 2030. So the rate at which they are capturing more communities to consume the power has reduced. In 2017, the government projected to cover 2,180 communities, ended up covering only 446. In 2018, the government projected to cover 1,796 communities, ended up covering 
122 community as of September. So what's the reason? If you go at this phase, the excess capacity will exist. No, but what's the reason? There must be a reason why they haven't been able to capture what That is their policy. Their policy has changed from 2020 to 2020. No, but that's fine. But in between the time, there are targets. And you're saying they're not able to meet the targets. And the question then is, what are the reasons for the One of the reasons is that if you say uh, Ghana Beyond AIDS and 2017, your donor funded in the budget is 88%. At the end of the day, only 26% of that had been released. 2018, the same. So they have financial constraints. Financial. Well, but, mm -hmm. Now, let me say. So it's not let necessarily a policy. So, so no, but, but, no, but the point, no, no, let him the, the point is that mm -hmm. when you are not. You have changed the policy. Mm -hmm. It trickles down to how effective you will be. Mm -hmm. Now, this government came with the promise of one district, one factory. And we all know that the establishment of a plant will not take two years. It takes about three to five years. If actually they had implemented this policy, I think we should have most of this excess capacity consumed. Okay. Two, the hypocrisy <laughs> of the government. Now, the hypocrisy yep, yes. of the government. Government says, we have excess capacity. Meanwhile, it's extending power purchasing agreements. Car power. Ten years, they would have taken their ship away. The government has extended it to 20 years, and they will still take the ship away. Are you getting my point? The three PPAs, we are aware, they are bringing to us to extend it. You have excess capacity. Meanwhile, the existing PPAs, government is busy extending it for many more years. You see the hypocrisy of government. Very well. I'm Pleasure, not, please. Not, look, I, I honestly don't know why MPPL don't give NDC the credit for solving Doomso. If they give them the credit for solving Doomso, then they can credit them for the mess they created in solving Doomso. You understand? Because look, all these things my brother is talking about, and you ask them, why are the government not able to do the things mm. they're supposed to do? You solve Doomso. And I'll give the credit to NDC. They solved them so, but you solved it by not proper planning. You solved it by putting this country in so much indebtedness. Let me give you some statistics. My brother, point of order. Point of order. Point of order. Wait, just a minute. Point okay. Of order. Wait a okay. minute. Point okay. Yes, point come in. Order. Point of order. 30 seconds. In governance, there's something called perpetual secession. We know that. And that's so, is, wait. Well, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, once a government takes over, yes. they take over assets and liabilities. Yes, yes, but, 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 he, everybody makes it look like Esla was only raised for power sector debt. It was not. It was raised for energy sector indebtedness. They cleared all the BDC. Before, we were talking about BDC indebtedness. Now nobody talks about BDC indebtedness. They cleared all the banks indebtedness But the BDCs, BDCs have been crippled. They, no, they've no, been crippled. But, they have, but, 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 but the, the debt me, has been cleared. Yes, been crippled. All, yes, the BDC, all the BDC indebtedness to the banks was cleared with the mm -hmm. Esla money. They cleared a lot of debts that VRA owed to people. They supplied them crude oil and all those. So VRA got some uh, flexibility in terms of liquidity. Look, let me, let me learn. My brother, you enjoy some. Listen, the biggest problem MPP had, and that's why I always fought Honorable Jacob. When he came and went to parliament and told us that, look, it's a financial problem, this, 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 we expected him that when he took over, he would have put measures in place to stop the hemorrhage, stop the indebtedness going forward. Because you came to me 2.4. You said it's 2.4. How, what measures do you put in place to stop this mm -hmm. thing going forward? Now, there's a program in the Ministry of Energy called the Energy Sector Recovery Program, which Honorable Amewu has put in place. This is something that you expected a jacun to have put in place in 2017. This Energy Sector Recovery Program, which is now looking at critical points of where the government is losing money, where can we stop losing money, let's make sure that MDAs are paid their in, uh, bills in time. All this critical self-assessment which this Energy Sector Recovery Program seeks to do should have been done by Honorable Jacob. He didn't do it. Well, it's being done now. Well, it's being done now. Just a minute. No, no, it's being done now. Let me land. Let me land. Let me land. No, no, let me land. It's not the responsibility only of the Minister of Energy. Thank you. The responsibility of government. But he is the Minister of the Sector. Please, let's not go there. Let me land, please. Look, they talk of, NDC talks of indebtedness of this government, which is true. But guess what, Abna? When you are planning for a country, you plan well. We are our own gas. 
You contract companies to come in and develop the gas. Then you sign take or pay agreements with them, which now cost us $25 million a month mm -hmm. if we don't take the gas. Mm -hmm. We're going forward. We now sign all these PPAs you knew we did not need because you're, at that time we're doing 1,800 megawatts uh, at peak. You knew that the forecast of energy commission was not even going to catch to 3,000 until 2025 and upwards. You went ahead and signed over 4,000, uh, 5,000 PPA, uh, PPAs. Meanwhile, all these 5,000 PPAs you signed had take or pay, pay. conditions, yeah. meaning that we are going to saddle with these debts. Yeah. But let me give you some figures. They talk of. Um, so How what much you're saying is, in a bid to solve the energy crisis, crisis yes, you went yes, yes, all look, over look, look, and then perhaps pay, exceeded. Pay, listen, and that's why we, we find ourselves. So that's fine. Let me no, 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 carry on. Just a minute. Carry on, yes. Let me give you some figures. We now pay $168 million under the OTC Sankofa. $168 million we pay if we don't take. The, the gas. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the infrastructure that the NDC was supposed to put in place to be able to take these gas, you know, you, you, you did not put in place. In 2016, the reason ECG made profits is because the take or pay in the accounts of, of ECG in 2016 was only 8.6 million Ghana cities. Do you know what it was in 2017? 101 million mm -hmm. and growing. So in 2017, it has ballooned from 8.6 to $101 million. So it is your lack of planning. It is your inefficient in being able to see forward. It's what is causing the, 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 the problem in the country today. What were the MPP going to do? We talk of looking at the <laughs> well, so there's a, There was an option of you know coming back to the table, renegotiating these deals, or oh, that wasn't possible. We, that is what that is what this. But uh, then he's saying that, for instance, with Kappa, that, no, that, that now extended because it. that you know, no, mm -hmm. the energy sector recovery program seeks to do that because I've now look. This is the problem. The government is saddled with huge indebtedness. Sure. Do you know that as of 2017, the indebtedness was 33% of our total tax revenue? Mm. Okay. So look, something and what has is to, it now? Oh, I don't have the, the current figure. But in 2017, total energy, energy sector indebted 2017 mm. was 33% um, of our tax revenue. Going forward, the ministry has done and as my brother said, the president need to own up to this. And I think that is why Honorable uh, Amewu has gone to cabinet and cabinet has given him the directive to do this energy sector recovery program. They are looking at critical things. Even in that, I was surprised to see that in that document that the ministry have done, they admit that the 2017 reduction was to their determinant, which goes to some of the, things the, that the, the tariff reduction. Sure. They, they've admitted mm. that because of the dollar to the city, it didn't work so well. So there is a self-assessment which they have done. So going forward, the point is that how do we resolve this problem? That is why some of these renegotiation of mm -hmm. the car power and agreements you have done. Mm -hmm. Look, when MPP was leaving, the gas was In nine MP point gas. Mm. Our own gas, MMBTU was nine point eight dollar. Pay MMB to you. When NDC was when leaving. When NDC was uh, leaving. Mm -hmm. Our Digital own gas. gas. Gas from our natural gas. Natural yeah, gas. Yeah, no. 9.8. the agreement. 9.8 MMB to you. Mm -hmm. I'll tell today, you how you My brother. Safe. Today, the, this government has negotiated it <laughs> down to 6.08. Three dollars less mm -hmm. than what you negotiated. So, please. For me, the MPP should give all the credit to NDC for solving the doom so. Then at the back of it, that slapped them with the mismanagement okay. of the economy. Okay. Okay. Very well. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Like to address look, some few look, issues look, with look, my brother. Yes, the NDC, nobody knew what was what you know they were doing when they signed all these ludicrous contracts. Nobody knows what they were doing, what they were thinking, why they couldn't plan better. The problem is here today. Let's stop pointing fingers. The problem is here today. Let's solve it because if we don't solve it, we go into a situation which we might not be able to control. And so I'm not one to point finger. Yes, they didn't do the right thing. They should have done the right thing. They should have made sure that this uh, take or pay or take or not pay thing, they shouldn't have brought it in. But what do we do today? That's a question. I agree. The government has been able to bring down is the capacity charge yes capacity charge six point zero no, the, the gas the, the gas, gas I'll, I'll, I'll address it and are you, you how are you disputing that let's are you disputing that um, i'll analyze it no are you disputing <laughs> that has i been... want to let them know <laughs> no you could analyze it, it but was the point is, is that... on the cost savings <laughs> so there's been a reduction no there's been even a reduction, the reduction but, but it's been, not up to the level no, there's been a reduction no i'll explain it i'll explain it if you want me to explain it i just want to yeah now let me explain it but please 
please let Mr. Uh -huh. Jantua carry on. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the case uh -huh. is, there has been a reduction. Uh -huh. Whether they are in communes to it, whether you know they've uh, thrown somebody off the bus, mm -hmm. and there I'll are reductions you know. there. Now, going forward, let's hope that we don't accumulate on the reductions that have been brought in, and that is the challenge we have. Mm. That is the challenge we have. Look, when the uh, MPP came into power, I think it was the first uh, State of the Nation address. What did government do? They pulled down a lot of taxes. What have they gone back to? They've raised back the taxes. And that is where the challenge is. When you do something, you've got to be able to stick to it. If you can't stick to it, don't even start. No, but you, I mean, you review things, you evaluate things, and then go back to the drawing table and do it the you other way. I mean, review. you just don't you, stick to it. Where, if it's not working, where, you don't Abna, stick to it. Abna, you don't review things in a short term. You view things with an eye into the long term. So that you can you can see whether coming going forward, we would have to increase X, we would have to increase Y. Yes, I do agree. Sometimes there are emergencies. Mm. The emergencies that you need to take control of and make sure that you can realign things mm -hmm. and things don't go bad. But those emergencies are few and far between sometimes. But we look at the energy sector today, right through the value chain, downstream, upstream, electricity, power, problems, which we cannot continue that way 2.2 billion what do you call it uh, legacy debt mm -hmm. 2017 to now 2.4 billion addition how huge. it's huge i'm not talking small sums of money it's huge and that is why i'm saying that look irrespective of how my brother kojo is analyzing it let's all sit around the table <laughs> government let's all sit around the uh, uh, is it only mpp that fingers we pointed out. Is the only NDC. When Dumso comes, all of us will be part and parcel inside. We saw what happened the last time round. Businesses collapsed. People were out of work. People couldn't do anything. People's uh, purchasing power had to go up because any food they put in the fridge it couldn't cool down. So it is key that we don't point fingers. That is where I see uh, it. Yes, let me, but let me ask this question that you, you raised it the PPAs. For which we're paying certain sums of money. I mean, like the take, the take or pay yes. agreements and all. How do we get out of that? Well, we need to sit down with those we have agreed to this with and come to some conclusion. Tell them, look, whatever you do, we won't be able to pay. It isn't something we can pay. And they, and I think Car Power mm -hmm. has tried to, you know, but then that's what it's out. been extended. Yes, well, that's why it's been and an, an Car Power indicated that if that is what we're going to do, then extend it for another twenty. Years ten for years. Ten, 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 ten years, another ten years for us. If that is something that would help solve the challenge now, let's do it. So let's go back it. to the table. Unless, and let's and let's make sure that the ten year extension is not going to accumulate debt. It's the same. It is the question of the debt. That's where the problem mm -hmm. is. Let's now, right now, we say we I have excess we say we have excess gas, mm -hmm. eh? but we are trying to bring LNG in. How does that make sense? We have excess gas. We try to bring LNG. Why we bring LNG? You only bring LNG in when you have a deficiency of gas. Why are we bringing it in? Who is responsible to make sure that we do the right thing? Is it the president? Is it the minister of energy? Who is? But you see, I also keep on saying that at any given time, Abna, when we're doing these things, carry the people along. Carry the people along for them to understand where you're heading for. That's why you are a government. You, you don't want the suspicion that mm, they are doing something under the table that we don't know. It doesn't help. Mm. Carry us all along. You have the media houses. Come, the ministers, come and sit and talk. Because look, this is one country I see. The ministers in charge of these areas do not come on programs like this. Because they are working. Yeah, but oh no, they are bigger is, than that. Is, isn't that isn't that part of the work? They are bigger. Isn't that part of They're the working. work to communicate with the mm -hmm. people? Because come 2020, are they not going to come back to the people? Are they not coming to sit on these uh, media houses to tell them why they should vote them back into power? And so if you're giving that position to control and to do the work, why don't you come and sit here and explain to us? I would expect it, if nothing at all, deputy minister sitting here, if the minister himself can't come, his chief director sitting here, ex expressing some of the things that he so that honorable who is in parliament, who is supposed to be with the legislature, can also ask the questions.
and people like uh, 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 Kojo too can punch them in areas that he feels they are not doing the right mm. thing. But we don't see that. Mm. Very well. Can I, I address the 9.8 now? The, the reduction. Yes. You see, we don't read the, the details, the nitty gritties of the agreement. That's your job. The agreement that. said 9.8. However, we have a World Bank support of 7 billion. For every $100 million cost savings, the, the gas price will reduce by 55 cents. In March 2017, GMPC, part of their work program, outlined that they had made a savings of $690 million. And instead of applying it to reduce the gas price, they wanted to use it to drill more wells, to increase the plateau, so that instead of producing 181 million standard cubic feet a day, they want to increase it to 250 million standard cubic feet a day. The committee said, no, apply it to reduce the gas price. And if you apply that amount, the gas price is supposed to reduce by $3.3. And in our report to the plenary in Parliament, we made it clear that we had instructed that this amount should be applied by the agreement to reduce the gas, gas price. You apply it and you say, I have done it. But then, they, they did apply it. No. And then so you don't work. tell me that you did this. When I had made provision for it to be reduced, if there are cost savings, mm -hmm. and there was a cost saving, and therefore you apply it, Acknowledge that the nine uh, the nine point eight was an indicative price. Do you get my okay. point? It was an indicative price, and there was savings. It has been applied to reduce it per the agreement. Two. So we you're saying that there was no we, other choice. We even they were compelled. That to, is the agreement. To. That is what the agreement had. If only we are all even agreements calling. were complied we with had, like that. We had follow up <laughs> to ensure because that is the agreement. Mm -hmm. Once the savings is done. We even believe that there's more savings. Mm. And we have called on the ministry to audit per the agreement that immediately they complete the development phase and production start. They should truly get auditors to audit the true cost of development. As we speak, it has not been done. But can't you do it as a committee? No. Well, you this can, you, you need, can call the oversight. No, no, no. Yes. Oversight, you can call. They will come and give me the figures. Yes, of course. Yes, you can call the auditors. There are auditors that have the professional qualification to audit. But that's the point is. We can, they can give us figures. And that is what they say. They, they have saved since 90. Honorable, if question, they tell me that drilling is this, I don't is, have that technical expertise. So you needed to contract a, 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 a but can't you can't you former minister the of process? Energy. Can't you activate it? You no, need to get it started. No, that's what I'm going. Sure. The former minister for energy and subsequently GMPC had indicated they are looking for auditors as we speak. It hasn't started. It's my responsibility to call on them. Mm -hmm. So don't make it as if we had agreed what, nine point eight. They are looking for auditors. There are quite a lot of good auditors in this country. One. No. Or small like that. Not for, for petroleum. For petroleum. For petroleum. Yes. We don't have. Yes, whatever the we case We don't have here. If it, you need we to don't bring it. If you need that to is bring why we call on them, them in. to do it. And so that we ascertain per the agreement the true cost before going but forward. But I think the point is, two, sorry, yes, two. you get your we are two, not, but we the, the first point is also give important. It to because the thing is, if it is a step that has to be taken, then by hook or crook, it needs executive. to be done. We call on so the executive. So it's not to leave them, you know. We call on the executive. And when we meet them, uh, they present their decision. Who meet their review? Who ask them where they have gotten to? It is delaying. They have started production. Mm -hmm. We need that. They are factoring it into cost oil or whatever to deduct at the end of the day. But we must know that that project is non-associated gas. Hmm. It's not like Jubilee. It's a different Where it is dependent, you can take the setup. oil, yes. and the gas yes. is a, yes. an extra thing. This yes. one, they depended yes. so much right. on the gas. the gas. So the take or pay is a guarantee for them. Very, very important. Now, let's come to the infrastructure. In wrapping up, we have this about Why we are not also. able to consume the gas? We enter into this agreement. Less than five, actually. We are supposed so. to do a reverse flow. Processes have started. Mm -mm. You have come to power. As at October 2018, one year, ten months, you are blaming the previous government. 
then that is a clear sign. But of the reverse flow has very well. Has quickly. Been. No, that is what that they were shut down some time ago. For At, that, that is why I say up to October, mm -hmm. one year, ten months. You have done nothing to do the reverse flow, and you are blaming President Mahama for that. Thank you. That is a clear sign of incompetence. That's fine. Could well, you, and after the reverse flow, Honorable, is it working? Tower power should have been tackled by now. We are running out of time. To consume the gas. And it's so sitting here consuming uh, uh, oil thank because you. of lethargy. Thank you very much. Could you carry on? Whoa. We sell yeah, our oil at this time. To so my brother, I'm happy when my brother is very forceful and open when Parliament has done their work. I'm very happy. Mm -hmm. When they don't do their work, then he now try to shift the blame to somebody else. No. Now, no, 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 it's good, my brother. No. That is why you guys are there. You know, everybody is happy when the oversight works. Sure. We are happy. You see, some of us, look, sometimes the facts on the ground suggest that when we were in darkness, and clearly, I understand that. I keep saying that, look, the situation that MDC found themselves from 2012 to 2015 was different. We were in darkness, so in sometimes 24-hour darkness. So yes, the clarity to make decisions will not have been the same as it is today when we, are, we have lights and MPP has to do better in making certain decisions. So I don't blame them too much. But the point is that, admit the fault. You didn't let's do deal well. With it. And let's deal with it. You understand? Because look, for you to start pointing fingers at somebody that he... Meanwhile, you have the one that has created a problem for him to no. inherit. No. That is my, in, no. my problem. Okay. No. Well, let's let's leave it there. That, no. Let me, no. let, let, that, that I, my brother, that's fine. That's the politics that you guys will play. It's exactly. good we have a for me, my, my, no, my, we, it's we'll good we have... It. Yes, but... Without see, consuming Abna, it. But the cost of it is the cost of it is what we are... We have a problem with it. No, it is in, 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 Abna, in the power Abna, sector. It's very important. Let me spend my last we minute. We, do. we, we, we get understand it. that. Let me spend, last, let me spend, spend it. That's fine. Let me spend my last minute trying to explain something further. The three uh, PPAs that the government is trying to look at, basically, is to give government a wiggle room now so that you move some of your indebtedness to the future so that for now, we have that liquidity to pay other things. So much money is going to the energy sector. It is affecting... Look, this government spends so much on energy and education that other areas are, are, suffering. are suffering and for me my last point is to veer off this program a little bit and congratulate fda for the work they did recently in arresting this woman mama g for this thing that they were doing okay. on social media yeah. so for me i want to congratulate fda and uh, dr Nkrumah and their team for a good well done a that we should done. we should really be on social media to take all these cosmetics and free products from the you system very much. thank you Yes, Mr. Jatta, you, you have the last minute. Oh, so I won't get any. Are we done? You nice. wrapped up nicely. Just if. Mr. Hanrobo, you wrapped up. 1992. <laughs> 1992 yes. to 2015, <coughs> we accumulated 2.4 billion. 2017 to date, we, are, we accumulated 2 billion. It is not sustainable. We definitely have to find a panacea to this. Going forward, this particular Thing cannot happen. We cannot accumulate another two mm -mm. billion going forward to 2020. We cannot. And we should stick. If we say Esla is to pay debts, we shouldn't take money out of Esla to go and pay something else. Mm. We should stick to it and try and pay the debts in the energy sector. It's key because without energy, energy is like water. Sure. Like the moment energy goes, Great. everything is finished. Let me take the, um, the last comments from our viewers and listeners and then we sign off. This one says, please ask the panelists whether the ESLA bonds are not enough to be able to settle the debts in the no, energy sector. Mm -hmm. That's Samuel it's from Tema. Yeah, there enough. you have it. Uh, Victor says, massive. if Ministry of Finance actually paid all the debts owed ECG, why are our power producers and suppliers still complaining about debts? The, these politicians yeah, will never tell us yet. the truth. That's victors from Akachi. Uh, the NDC should stop their propaganda as far as the energy sector is concerned. The MPP government must be praised for their good work in the energy sector. That's Prince Nuruddin Baumia in Boko. Um, this one says, Hi, Abna, it's serious. I live at Tayman. If we don't have light during the day, we sleep in darkness. And it seems to be selective doom. So they've divided the area into zones so that one zone goes off and you can see light in other zones in Tayman, but no light in your zone. God have mercy on us. That's Larry and Tayman. Uh, this one says, Good morning, Abna. When the fundamentals in your past sector are weak your managerial incompetence will surely expose you yeah. that sounds familiar i like that that I sounds I familiar to, i need, I need, on to, that I need note, to take that that's say. very good <laughs> on that note, we we'll say a big day the fundamentals you. yes we we'll expose you <laughs> for watching the show and listening to us we do appreciate your audience all the time and to the panelists honorable adam mutawakilu 
Mr. Kojopoku and Mr. Kwame Janswa. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We'll be back same time, same place next week. Do have yourselves a very good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you.